Hi, welcome back all of you. Nana here. And then in this session, uh, we are going to see the receipt accounting reconciliation. It's a very important topic. Fine. So am I audible now to all of you? Uh, yes, sir. You are audible now. Very good. Very good. Fine. So this is a very important session and then try to listen to it uh, very carefully. And then uh, it's also a very tough one. Now. Fine. The receipt accounting reconciliation. I will not share the screen now. <clears throat> now, uh, we are now completed all the uh, costing setups yesterday itself. Now we are going to begin creating the item actually. We'll not go there. So let us now go there and then create the item for this exercise actually. I go to the product management and then I go to the product information management. We go to the product information management. Uh, there I am now going to create an item in my master org. So for this exercise, what I did is On there, I've not gone to the CUCM training. I gone to uh, additional docs records four. In this, what happens? I'm going to go to the third document vision enterprise structure. So we have a ready-made enterprise structure with a ledger of US primary ledger, COAS chart of accounts, and then US legal entity. So below which I created a business unit called T01 business unit, and then I created a master called T01 master, and then T01 child. So I created these three entities below my financial entities, and so on this. I'm now going to create an item and then I will now create a PO and then I will now push it for receipt accounting and then cost accounting. And then as well as we will now see receipt accounting reconciliation action. Click on it, I'll go there. So click on it. We'll now go and then create an item in my newly created master. I click on create now. So we go there and then I'm going to create the item. Fine, it's about T0. <clears throat> if you put it automatically, the master will be coming. Fine, click on it. And then the red item is coming. Go there. So now what happens is this is not the root item class. I will now go there. I will now put the T01. Fine, nothing is there actually. So uh, we might not have done this one. I will not say root item class. I will not put, choose the root item class. And then I will. I have not made the default one now. Fine, that. So I have not made a default one. Let me make it as a default and then show it to you. Fine, click on cancel now. I have not made the default. Fine, click on right click and then duplicate now. Mm -hmm. So I have to make what happens the the template as a default one. Fine, click on it. I will not go to the setup and maintenance. I will not go there. Fine, click on it. So click on search now and then go there as about what manage item class. So we'll not go there, manage item class and then go there. We'll not click on the manage item class. I might have created everything on the root item class and click on edit now. And then I go to the templates and formats. There I will now query on my org. I will now go to the query vote, find query by example. The organization is what? I will not put my organization. Find dot T010. So on the T010. We have now done a lot of things and then I go for the PUR entry now. The purchase interpolate will be there. And this is the one now, fine, select it. And then I have not made it the default actually. When I have to make it the default first of all, fine. So is the T010, fine, the one now, fine. Let us now go there and then what happens first of all, what happens, I will now make it as what item status is active. And then the life cycle phase is what production. The unit summary is going to be each. Fine, each. And then here, what happens, I will now say primary. And then the pricing is going to be what primary, and then the conversion date is going to be both. So we are now seeing everything on the units of measures basically. Fine, everything has been done. So as and when you keep on doing it, fine, give a save. Fine. On the main area, we are done it now. Fine. On the overview page, we are not done completed. Fine, go there. I will now go to the specifications page. So in the specifications page, what happens? I go to the purchasing, and then I will now give a list price of two dollars. Fine, two dollars. Fine. So is the two dollars the list price? Fine, go there. So the purchase is purchasable is just actual. Fine, go there. And then you go to the uh, what's called manufacturing, and then ensure that what happens you are costing enabled the item defining attribute as well as the status attributes of item in, in either inventory asset value or all yes no, and then you go to the inventory and then all the four are yes actually. Fine, this much is sufficient. Right, you go that one, and then we are done nothing. Give a save. Now we are going to make it as what as a default one and select and then click on edit. We are going to edit now. Click on edit, and then here I know what was the call as what T zero one purchased item. Hang on, you want to find it. The T01 for the dump and then set as a default. So whenever I put the root item class, this will not default to me. Fine, the default will be coming. So it's now giving error message now. Fine, as a following error, the item attribute is readably cannot be updated. Thank you for it. Uh, so click on OK. I'm not accepting it actually. It's accepted. Even though it gave error now, fine, it is accepted it actually. So the default has come. Thank you. Seven close by which what happens? The setting of the root item class is not complete. Fine, close seven close. And then we'll now go ahead and then create the item actually. You go there, go to the product information management, and I will now go and then create the item actually for this now. And go to the create it up. Now, when I put my my template will not default. Okay. So D01 with a unit price of two. 
So when you're doing class, my T01 purchase item template is not defaulting by clicking on by which the item is going to be created. Your warning is coming for product data hub because somebody is modifying it. Now fine. Uh, click on doesn't matter. Fine. We are not doing on the product data hub. Fine. No, it's not fine. Accept it. Accept the warning. <clears throat> yes, yes. And then you'll see that what happens now it is coming as a draft. So you put the draft, what happens now? The activity on what happens, the product data hub is happening now. Fine. So we cannot use this at all. Fine. We cannot use this root item class at all. So give a cancel now. Fine. We cannot use it. Thank you. Cancel. So we had to use some other root item class only because the root item class is undergoing a product data hub modification. So what I do is I will not go there. Fine. Click on it. I will not go to the create item. I will not click on create item. So here, what happens? I will not go to the T01. And then I will not choose the master. I will not, root, I will not choose the root item class now. Fine. But instead, what happens? I go there. I will not choose some other class. As far as CCM is concerned, the item class is not much of important. Only for the product data hub and then product lifecycle management, it is very important. So you'll not go there. I will not choose one thing. Fine. Automatic, I will not choose. Automatic, I will not choose. I will not choose the automatic. Now, fine. Go there. So the template is okay. Fine. It is, is our template is coming. It's okay. Automatic. The item class is automatic because it doesn't have any uh, what happens application as far as pure SCM is concerned. Only PDH and then the product like PLM modules will be having a great importance. Now, fine. Click on okay. Because ultimately it has to come as approved. Now, fine. Click on okay. Now, click on us. Now, fine. So the status has to come as approved. Fine. Is If it is coming as approved, it's okay. Fine. Go there. Monitor. I will not put the say T01. So we are now going to do the reconciliation test actually. Fine. I will not say the item is what reconcile <laughs> test. So the item name is a reconcile test. Fine. So receipt accounting reconciliation is going to be tested in this. Right? Click on the description. I will not go to the associations and then I will not go on the associate to the child. Dog. So go to the actions and then go to self net. You go to associate the child. Dog. So go to the T01. So we have one master and one child created. I will not associate my child or click on apply and then click on done by which what happens. The association of this item is now getting completed. Fine, go there, click on it, and then go there, save and close by which the item is now created. So the item is having a list price of two dollars, and then we will now go ahead and then create a purchase order. So click on the home icon, <clears throat> and then here I go to the procurement, and then I go to the purchase orders. Fine, go to the purchase orders, and then let us know what happens. I create a purchase order actually. Go straight away and then create a purchase order. No, go there, fine, click on it. Go there, click on the create order. We are now going to create an order. <clears throat> so go there. It's a purchase order. So we have to make him as a procurement agent. Then only what happens is the procurement view will be going. So the first activity is to what? Make this agent. Fine. I am now working on PRC21. So we had to make him as a procurement agent. Fine. Go there. I will not click on done now. Fine. I will not go to the manage procurement agent task. Manage percentage. Fine. Procurement percentage. Fine. Agent percentage. Fine. Manage procurement agent is the top. Fine. On it. I will not make him as a procurement agent. Only buyers can create a purchase order. Frankly, on us now. <clears throat> so we will not put our BU. Our BU is a different one. Frankly, the uh, procurement BU is what T01. So T01 is the procurement BU. Frankly, and then the agent name is what I will not say student. Fine, comma P. Uh, 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 your uh, student comma PRC 21. So the last name comma first name is the way you have to write the name now. Fine, on it. The procurement be used also this one. Now, fine, that. I will not give him access to all of the data. Fine, doesn't matter because we are not going to test the other agents' documents. It can be none. Okay, fine, doesn't matter. So click on it and then click on seven close now. What happens? The procurement agent is now created successfully. Fine, click on now. Now we will not go there and then we will not try to create a purchase order. Fine, click on now. So click on the home icon <clears throat> and then go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders and then we will not create a purchase order for this now. So click on create order. We are now creating a purchase order. And you can now see the procurement view coming up now. Fine. He is, he is the agent for this now. So he can be an agent for multiple views. Then in the case, whatever will be coming as a list of values like the purchase order. So supplier is what? Yesterday we created the supplier fine for the T01. And then we'll not put it. So supplier is not there actually. Fine. Doesn't matter. So I have not created any supplier at all. So let us now use the vision supplier actually. Fine. Go there. So uh, we will know before using the vision supplier, what happens there? Let us say if I'm going to use ABC consulting. If I'm going to use ABC consulting now, fine. Click on it. So if I'm going to use ABC, it's not coming. Fine. So we have to what happens? Uh, do the site assignments for this. Fine. Click on it. I will not go there. Right click and then duplicate. Fine. Go there. We will now make a site assignment for the ABC consulting now. Fine. Click on it. Go to the procurement and then go to the suppliers now. Fine. So he must be available for our view actually. Fine. Click on it. I will not query. Fine. Go there. Click on it. I will not query the ABC consulting. Fine. Go to the manage suppliers. Go there. <laughs> ABC and then entry now. Fine. I will not use ABC consulting. Select it and then. Click on it. Now, what happens? You go there. Address is there now. Fine. Address is there. Fine. Everything is there. So, ABC US one, I'm going to use it for mine now. Fine. Click on site. I'm not going to the site now. Fine. Click on site. And then here, what happens? I'm going to add a site now. Fine. Click on person. Let me add a site. Fine. Click on. I'm not going to add a site. So, let me add a site. Fine. Address name. Drop it down. I will not do the ABC US one now. 
and then I will not make it as what site one actually. <clears throat> Site one is the one. So I'm not adding a site bank. I will not give a save. The remaining tab regions will be getting enabled automatically. I go to the purchasing. Fine, click on the purchasing. I go to the purchasing. And then here, what happens there? You go there. And then uh, I'm not enabling anything. Fine. Because the pay on use as well as the pay on the receipt has already been discussed. Fine. On the vendor management inventory and consent inventory, everything has been done. So I'm not doing anything at all here. I will not go to the what? I will not go to what? I will not go to the invoicing part. And then I will not say what happens there. The invoice currency is going to be US dollars. And then the payment currency is going to be used over. I mean, make it these two things you make it now. Click on it. And then I go to the site assignments. I will now make this site available for my BU. Now click on that. Click on an actions and then go to add. Now find click on an add. And then I will not choose my what happens the T01 and then give it that. So the client BU and then the build to BU is coming. Find click on the shift location. Find I'll say T01. I will not put the child location. Find that I will not put the child location here. And then here also, whatever they'll not put the child location. Find T01. <clears throat> So now we can very well create a purchase order for the site because it is now associated to my BU actually, my line of business basically. So go back to on it. So click on save and close. By which what happens? Sir? The site assignments is now completed. Site assignment is now completed. Click on it. So click on okay now fine. So click on save and close now. Click on save and close. You know that. Now all the things are completed. Fine. Click on the now. And then always what happens whenever you make such a major change, what happens? Have a habit of what logging out and logging in for the changes to be sensed by the system actually. Or otherwise we have to run the LDAP. Fine. LDAP also will not sync it. <laughs> LDAP is an inbuilt mechanism which will be syncing it automatically. And go there. So close it. No close other screens. No close other screens. And I come over here. I will not go to the Pokemon. And then I go to the purchase orders. Now so we'll go there. So ABC Consulting supplier will be available for our view now. Thank you. So click on it. I will not go on the create order. So click on create order. Now we are going to create an order actually. We are in the process of creating a purchase order, and then we are going to test the receipt accounting reconciliation. Okay, the business unit. Thank you. I will not put ABC <clears throat> for the business unit. Whatever that will be coming. ABC consulting is coming. The site will also be coming. The site plus contract. Everything is coming. Click on. So click on create because we associate the, uh, the site assignments. This is not, this supplier is available for my BU actually. So click on create. Now we are creating a PO now. The PO is now getting created actually. Will not go there and then I'll not on this fine. Go there. I will not go to the notepad. We'll open up a notepad and then I'll not note down the PO number actually. Yes. So go there. It's 2000 is the number now. Fine. Go there. So 2000 is the number. So PO number is what 2000. So yesterday we are not set up those numbers actually. So click on it. Go down. Fine. Go there. So 2000 number. Fine. Go there. So go there. Go to the lines and then click on plus now. I will not put my item. The reconcile test item. I'm going to put it now as my PO line. So click on plus. And then let me populate my reconcile test item, which is having a price of two dollars. No, fine, go there. Is a T01. Fine, we have got only one item on this. No, fine, come on, that will be coming automatically. Real. So it's coming, fine, reconcile test is coming. So with the description category, quantity, I will not say go for quantity. quantities. <clears throat> the units are each from the what I'm your item class templates. We had enough, fine, go there. So go for 100 quantities. 100 quantities. And then two dollars is coming from the, And then if the requester, we can even populate the requester, fine, go there, quant. And then all these things you can do. They have made so many, uh, what was the DFF actually. So if required, we can even add all those DFF sections. So go to the schedule, not click on schedule, and then we'll now say when it is required. So go there. So we'll now see when it is required. Fine, go there. Requested delivery, I want it today itself. Fine, come on. Go there. So give us save, now fine, click on save, and then see whether any errors are coming. So somebody has made these DFFs as well. Some a list of values actually, fine, genes. And then click on save, we'll now see whether any other things are there. Fine, people are now adding so many things actually. So go there. Jeans color is also important. I click on it. <coughs> I will not say pink color. So those who are having je pink color jeans only will be able to survive on this. Now I click on save. So the 2000 PO is now getting saved. Now fine. We'll now go on and have a look at what happens. You are uh, this thing. Fine. So the charge account is not there. The variance account is not there. Accrual account is not there. All the three accounts have to be set actually. Charge variance and accrual has to be set. Then only what happens, you can approve it. Now, fine, click on it. All the three accounts are required. Thank you. Now go to the next place. Now, fine, click on it. Now go there. Right click on the duplicate. And then we'll now set up all the accounts which are required for the PO actually. The accounts has to be set. Now, fine, click on it. We'll now click on the name on the right hand side top. You go to the setup and maintenance and then come to the FSM area. In the FSM area, you choose the manufacturing and supply chain management. Fine, drop it down and then choose the manufacturing and supply chain management. And then here I go to the manage mapping set. And go there. Come on. So now go to the manage percentage. Fine. Map percentage. Fine. Set percentage. We go to the manage mapping set, fine. Go there. The cost accounting, fine. Click on it. So the charge, accrual, and variance, everything has to be set, fine. Go to the manage mapping set. And then click on the scope and then select your scope as cost management, fine. Drop it down and then click on select and add and then apply and go to task. And then we are going to choose what cost management. Go down, now, fine. You now choose cost management. So all the three accounts has to be set, now, fine. Remember, otherwise, what happens? It will not be possible for us to push it into payables, actually. It is required, actually. 
So cost management, this is the one now fine. Select it and then click on save and close by which what happens there. The cost account manage mapping set will be coming. Fine with that. So first of all, you'll go to the middle account, fine with that. Middle account. Middle account, fine with that. So go to the middle account. Middle account, fine. Middle account organization. Fine. Click on search. No. Fine. Click on search. Middle account. There's no searching for it. So it is the middle account organization. We have already seen the charge accounting. How many ways we can populate the account? No. Fine. We are not jumping directly into this. No. Fine. Click on middle account organization. and go there. So let us know what happens. We have the US chart of accounts already there. No. Fine. This is the one we are using it now. So here, what happens? We use only the US chart of accounts. Fine. Nothing else is there. So the financial entities are going to be common for my line of business also. The ledger, COA, legal entity are common. So I'm not going to use on this. No. Fine. Click on it. Go on. And you choose it from the left hand side and go down. The bottom, what happens is we have to make an entry for our org actually. For our org. Yeah. So go there. So click on it and then here, what happens? I will not take a copy of this account now. <clears throat> so go there. I will not take a copy of the account. So let me make an entry now. If I click on it, take a copy of it and then go there. So click on plus and then I will not make an entry. So go there. So is what? It is a T010. It's a master shop. Fine, go there. Uh, it's, a, it's for the, what happens? It's not a master shop. I have to have it for the child org now because I'm not making the child. Fine, go there. So T011. I will not paste it, fine, go there. It is not done. <laughs> so we have not made an entry for our org, actually, for the middle charge account. Fine, give a save and close. So it is not completed. It will not go back here, and then it will not go to actions, and then go to validate. So we have initially three errors now, fine. It has come down to two. Fine, click on it. So the middle charge account is now set, actually. <clears throat> so click on validate, fine, go there. So it is not going to validate because the middle charge account has been done, fine, go there. The charge account. So the accrual and variance are the errors which will be coming now, fine, click on it, actions. And then go to, go to what happens, go to validate. So validation will tell you how many. So it's not still what happens, the charge account is not coming now, fine, click on the charge account has already been set now, fine, click on it. You will now go to the what distributions, fine, click on the distributions. And then you go to the distributions and what happens, you go there. So click on it and then we will now generate the charge account actually. We will now go to the generation, fine, go there. We will now go there, go there. So here, no, none of the accounts are coming. Fine, go to actions and then what happens, the rebuild the accounts, fine. When you rebuild, the charge account has to come here. The charge account has to come. The charge account is coming now. Fine, click on OK now. Fine, the charge account has come. Click on OK. Now, what happens? You go there and then we will not make a check now. Fine, click on OK. And then again, what happens? You go to the actions and then go to validate now. Fine, now only two errors has to come. The charge account is now fully set. So, two errors will be coming now. Fine, click on it. So, you'll be getting two errors now. So, one is what? The variance and then the accrual. Fine, those errors will be coming. So, we have to go and then set up the accruals now. Fine, so, variance. Fine. In the meantime, what happens? It is coming. Fine, go there. So, we got the variance account and then the variance account error and then the accrual account error. Fine, click on here. We will not go there. We will not go and then set up the variance now. Fine, go there. Expand it and then go there. I will not choose what? Invoice price variance. Fine. Invoice and then entry now. Fine. So, we need it. will now say invoice variance account opposition. Fine, click on it. We will not go there. So, we are using the same new startup accounts. Fine, go there. Click on it. Select it from the left hand side and then go down. And then you can now see it is now selected. Fine, go there. Click on it. You will now use the same account. Fine. In reality, what happens? Uh, the financial team will be giving you this account. I am now using the same account for my organization. Also, fine. Take a copy of it. So click on plus now. I will now put my child org over here. Fine, there's a capital D zero one one. No, remember, and then I will now paste it. Now, fine, click on it. It is not done. So click on save and close. So by which what happens? Uh, we are now given the variance account over there. Now, fine, click on it. I will now go to the edit document. Fine, go down, and then I will now go there. So go to the distributions. Then click on edit, and then I will now create the account. Fine, I will now. Build the account again. Fine. The variance account will be coming. Fine. Go to actions and then go to rebuild accounts. The variance will be coming. The variance is come. Fine. Click on okay now. And then make it. What happens again? Go to actions and then go to validate. You will have only one error. You will have only one error. <clears throat> you have one error. So the accrual account is the only error. Fine. Click on it. I will not go there. I will not set up the accrual account also. Fine. Make a search now. Fine. Go there. Accrual. <clears throat> accrual is the one. Fine. Enter in. And then I will not go to the accrual account. <clears throat> So accrual account organization level, I'm setting it up. Fine, click on it. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not choose the US or chart of accounts. Fine, go there. Go down. And then the bottom, what happens? You click on it and then I will not check up there. This is a liability account. Fine. So here, what happens? Uh, we have to have, we, we will now choose a different liability. Now, fine, go there. So 221, is the PO liability actually. Fine, PO liability. So go there. I will not take a copy of it. I will not put a different one. Now, fine, click on it. I will not put it. 22210 is there. Fine, go there. So this is a PO liability. Fine, go there. I will have to make a different one. Now, fine, click on it. So click on plus now, fine, click on plus. I will now make a different liability now. Fine. My organization fine. T011 now, fine, go there. I will now paste it and go there. So click on it. I will now make a different liability now. <clears throat> so I will have to make a different liability, fine. So for demonstration of the accounts, what happens, I need it now, fine, go there. So I will now say, click on search now, fine. 222, I will now search now, fine, click on it. 222, then make a search now, fine, click on search. You know, see how many are coming. So 7080, fine. I will now choose the 70, now, fine, click on it. This is the one, now, fine, click on OK. So my account is what? The PO liability is what? I will, not, I will take up of it. I will not put on this place. I will not, go there. I will not say it's a PO liability. PO. PO liability is what? 17 now. This is the one now. Fine, PO liability. Fine, this is a very important one. While you're doing the reconciliation, actually, fine, PO liability. 
to go there. So it's not done now. Fine, go there. So click on save and close, and then we'll now rebuild the account. Right? Click on go there. I will now go there. Go down. And then the distribution, what happens? You go and then what happens? Bring in the edit mode now. So we are in the edit mode, and then we'll now rebuild the account. Fine, go there. You can now see the accrual will be 70 actually. Fine, go to actions, and then click on rebuild account. Fine, go there. It will be 70 actually. So 70 has come now. Fine, all the three accounts are come. Fine, click on OK. Now you will not have any problem in the validation actually. Fine, go to actions and validate. There will not be any issues at all. We can now go and then see who is going to approve. You have to make it as automatic. Fine, click on it. So go there. Click on the manage approvals. There is no error at all in action validate. So go there. And then we will not see who is going to approve. It must be automatically set. Otherwise, we will not ch change it to automatic actually. So in the manage mapping set, we will not set up every account. Now, fine, click on done and then come out of it now. And then have a look at nothing. We will not see who is going to approve. So if it is going to be application developer, I can very well submit the 2000 now. Fine. The 2000 PO will be submitted for approval if it is going to be automatic actually. Automatic means what? Application developer. Nothing has been set over here. Now fine, go there. We'll not set that. Fine, click on it. No, go there. Click on it. I will not go to the manage document approval. Fine, click on it. Nothing is set actually. Fine, click on it. I will not go to what? Search. I will not go to what? Manage document approval. Fine. Manage percentage. Fine. Doc percentage. Fine. APP percentage. Fine. Entry no. Fine. We go to the manage document approval. Manage document approval. Fine, go there. So click on the purchase document approval. Fine, go there. Click on it. And then here, what happens? You're going to set up. Fine, right? So here, here, somebody has enabled this. Fine. I will not disable it. I don't like this. Fine, right? I normally do it on uh, serial couple three. Fine. In the terms of approval, serial three, I'm not developing it. Fine, right? Many people are working in the globe now. Fine. So by the time you do it, what happens? Somebody would have changed. Now, fine. Click on edit roles. I will not create one. Now. Fine. Click on plus one. Fine. Let me create one. So go there. I will not say automatic. <clears throat> automatic. Fine. Go there. So take a copy of it and then click on the description. Now, fine. Go there. I will not say rule always applies. Fine. There is no condition at all. Fine. Click on OK. Now, fine. Go there. And then click on the add action. I will not make it as automatic. So drop it down and then make it as automatic. <clears throat> and then click on OK, by which what happens is now beginning automatic. Click on save and then deploy. So once when it is deployed, what happens? It will be sensed by the system actually. Deploying is must now. Any rule is now created. And then we will now enable this now. This uh, terms approval three has to be enabled. Now if I click on it, we will now enable it. Now if I click on enable, the tick mark will come in. It is now enabled. Now if I click on done and then go there. Now here, go there. We click on again, what happens? They give a back now. If I give a cancel now. If I click on the thing is coming, if I cancel. And then click again on manage approval. We will now see whether the application developer is coming or not. So once when it is approved, what we had to do is we had to go and then receive it actually. And then we had to ensure that the receipt routing is standard actually, because we are going to receive first. Again, it is not coming now, fine. It is not taking some extra time. Now fine, click on cancel now, fine. Sometimes what happens, this needs what happens, a condition also. Fine, click on it. It needs a condition also. We'll not go there. We'll not add a condition. Sometimes what happens when you add a condition, it will be coming properly. Fine, go there, click on it. Go there. Click on edit rules. Now, what happens without with the, with no conditions is now giving error. Now fine, click on it, now edit it. So we'll not put a condition as a BO now. Fine, click on it. We'll not remove it. Fine. Click on OK, we'll now add a condition. Sometimes what happens, the condition is also required. Fact, click on a condition. I will now say requisition, fine. R E Q U I. Requisitioning BU. Fine. Requisitioning BU. Uh, R E Q U S I. <laughs> requisitioning. You keep on writing now, fine. Requisitioning BU. Business unit now, fine. Requisitioning BU. Document editor now, fine. Go there. I will now say if the T01, <clears throat> I will now put it now. I will now put this as a condition. Sometimes what happens is the condition will ensure that it will definitely be going over there now. Fine. Click on save now. So the condition ensures that it's going. Sometimes uh, if it is not giving any error, fine, add a condition of your view. No, fine, click on deploy. This will not serve the purpose. No, fine, click on S, no, fine, no done. <clears throat> now it is not done, no, fine. So now you will not show what happens. Application developer is going to So click on save and then click on the manage approvals and then have a look at it. The application developer has to approve this document. No? 2000 has to be approved by this. And before you go for approval, we will not see to it ensure that the receipt routing is going to be standard actually. It's a two-step process. We will not receive in the gate, and then afterwards we will not put away into the sub inventory actually. We'll now wait for the manager approvals to come now. Fine. Let, let it develop as the application developer actually. So if that doesn't come with this now, fine. Now is the application developer is coming. So sometimes when you add the condition, it gives you the appropriate one. Remember now, fine. I will not give a cancel. I will not ensure that what happens, the receipt routing is going to be standard. Now, fine, click on it. Go down now, fine, click on it. I will not go there. Go to the schedules, now, fine, click on the schedules. I will not go to the schedules and go there. So click on it. I will not click on edit and then ensure that the receipt routing is going to be standard actually. So the receipt routing is standard actually. Fine. It will be coming from the receiving parameter actually. Fine. The receiving parameter set. Fine. So give OK now. Fine. Click on it. And then we will not submit for approval. The 2000 document will be submitted for approval now. Fine. Click on it. The 2000 document is not getting submitted for approval. So after that time, what happens? It will be getting approved. So it is a standard receipt routing. Fine. Go there. So click on OK now. Fine. And then you go to the manage orders and then have a look at it now. Fine. Click on it. Go to the manage orders and then query the 2000 now. Fine. Click on it. Now query the 2000. So 2000 is getting queried. Now fine, click on search. In the meantime, what happens? We will now set up our AP liability account. Now fine, click on it. Now go there. Click on it. So go there. Click on it now. Is now what happens? Now go there. Is now pending approval. In the meantime, what happens? Now go there. We will now go to what manage common options. Now fine, manage percentage. Fine, common options. So manage common options. Go there. So manage common options for payables and procurement. Fine, click on it. 
and then logo there, and then have a look at our T01 business unit. No? T01, and then give it arrow. This is basically a AP liability. No? I won't take copy of it. You know, these accounts are really very important in the re reconciliation process. No? Fine. I don't know how they are all coming. Fine. AP liability is what this account. You know, paste it. Fine. It's a, it's a zero, zero, whereas my PO liability is 70. No? Fine. So there is a concept of what a difference between the PO liability and AP liability. That is where the reconciliation comes into picture. No? Fine. There must be different accounts. So um, we have now put the PO liability in a different account and then AP liability is a different account. I'll go there, click on it. I will not what happens. I'll go there and then make a search. It will be open now. Fine, click on it. Click on search. It will be open. Open means what it is approved now. Fine. It's still pending approval. Fine, click on it. Click on the hyperlink of it. It's not developed now. For the first time you are submitting it, it will not take a long time. It will not go there. We will not try to make a result now. Fine, click on it now. It will not go there and then try to make a result. Fine. So click on it and then click on the home icon. And then here, go to the supply chain execution now. Fine. You go to the supply chain execution. So go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. Now, fine, click on the inventory management and then go there. And then we'll not try to receive it now. Fine, 2000 PO, I'm going to receive it now. Fine, click on it. So the default organization is coming as 000. Fine, go there, click on it. I will not go there. I will not go to the results. Now, fine, click on it. I will not change it to the home. Fine, go there. So go to the results. Now, fine, go there. Go to the and then we had to change the organization to what? Our organization. Fine, click on the receive expected shipments. We had to change it to our org. <clears throat> so click on the change or we will not see whether our org is coming or not. Fine, go there. Is there T011, fine, give it a tab now, fine, click on it. It's not coming, it is push actually, fine, T011. So that means what? Date access is not there, fine, click on cancel now. So let us not provide the date access and come over here, fine, click on it. We will not go there. First of all, we will not provide the date access, fine, click on set up from minutes, and then we will not provide the date access. Inventory has got four date access now, fine. One is the receiving agent, one is the warehouse manager, one is the shipping manager, and then one inventory manager, fine. These four inventory are fine, go there. So go there. manage personnel, fine, <clears throat> manage personnel, fine, data personnel, fine, access personnel. We will not give what? Three access now. I click on the manager. Out of four, what happens? We'll not give three for this exercise now. I click on it. Oh, what manager? Not, not sets actually. We'll not go to the manager access for users actually. We'll not go to the manager access for users. And then here I will not provide. No, I click on first now. We'll not provide three data access now. I go there. So PRC 11, <laughs> PRC 21. I go there. So PRC 21. Fine. Go there. Count. This is for the inventory manager. <laughs> inventory manager is the one. I go there. Oh, God. The role itself is not there. So the inventory manager is not there. So OUSCM role is there, fine. So we had to add these roles also, fine. We had to add these roles also, fine. That is another thing, fine. We have not done it, fine. Click on that. So we had to add these roles, fine. Click on that now. So we had to add the roles because it is not a vision org. And so if it is not a, it is outside vision, then what happens? We had to add the roles also. And go to the tools, fine. Go to the roles. So go to the tools. <laughs> I have not done set up everything now, fine. <laughs> Off of it was only done yesterday now, fine. So these things are not done. So fortunately, what happens? We are having a, Opportunity to see all these things. Right? You know, go to the PRC 11, PRC 21. We need four roles for operating the inventory, actually. We need four roles. Fine. One is what? OUSCM role will not take care of everything, only for the vision org. No. But if you're having your own org, then what happens? The four roles for inventory are required. The first one is what? Inventory manager. INV. Fine. Inventory manager ORA. Fine. Everything of ORA, you had to choose. No, fine. Click on it. And then click on add role membership. And the next is what? The receiving agent. Mm -hmm. So receiving agent of receiving agent of ORA is required. And then for put away, what happens? We need a warehouse manager. Mm -hmm. Warehouse manager of ORA. And then finally, what happens? We need a shipping manager also because we are not going to use the shipping manager here now, fine. Because we are not going to ship any product actually. For transfer orders and then your order management, we need this now, fine. So not the agent actually, but use what shipping manager. That is a higher role actually. If you can always give the what happens, a higher role actually. Shipping. <coughs> Manager, so go there. So shipping manager over, I just give it. No. Okay. But I'm not going to use it. No, fine. Only the first three roles I'm going to give a data access. No. So these four roles, along with the data access, is a must whenever you're working on any of your custom made orgs. No, I click on it. No, go there. So click on it. I'm not going to set up and maintenance. <clears throat> I'll not go to the setup and maintenance fine. Go there. So click on it and then go there. Go to the task list and then click on search and then come to the generic area of the task line. Go there. I'll not go to the manage person. Fine. Data person, access person. So go to the manage data access. Fine. ACC, yes, it's not fine. ACC, data access, fine, go there. So manage data access for users. I will not add the three data access center. So these four roles along with the data access is a must, fine. If you are working beyond the visions or the role is what? Inventory manager. So the inventory manager is there, fine, go there, on it. And then go to the security conversation, inventory organization, fine, go there. I will not say the T011. Mm -hmm. This is the one, no, fine, go on it. So click on save, and then what happens? They duplicate it, fine, duplicate it. And then give the receiving agent and then the warehouse manager. The three are sufficient for this current exercise. But in reality, what happens? All the four rules with the data access is a must for inventory. 
it is a SAS compliant model. If your if your model is a SAS compliant, you have to have this restriction actually, this security actually. So go that click on it. Inventory organization can go that. So T01 one now. And then duplicate it and then what happens? You give for the warehouse manager also. And then you're going to give it for the warehouse manager also. Warehouse manager. I'm going to wait a point. Click on the warehouse manager. And then choose it now and go to the inventory manager and go that. It's the T01 one. <clears throat> You go there and then give it now, click on it, and then give a second close. So we are now given everything now, click on it. We are not in the position to receive. In the manager, what happens? You go there and then make a search now. It will be an open condition. Fine. The pending approval order gone to open now, click on search. Go, go, go. One the chi. We got it now. Now what happens? You go there. We will not make a what happens? A receipt now, click on it. We will not go to the inventory manager and then make a receipt now, click on it. We will not go to the what? We will not go to the supply chain execution now. We will not go to the supply chain execution. We will not go there. We will not go to the supply chain execution. <clears throat> Supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. Fine, go to the inventory management. It will not go to the receipt now. Fine, click on it. So click on it. And then here, what happens? You go to the receipts and then receive expected shipments and then change the R to what? You go there. So click on change R. I will not change it to what? T011. T011. That will be available now. Fine, click on OK. Fine. It will be coming. Come, come, come. Mandichi, we got it. Fine, T01. Fine, click on it. And then here, we will now go and then query your receive expected shipments for the PO2000. The purchase order number is 2000. Fine, go there. And then give it a tab. And then click on search now. Fine, we can now very well see. So the 100 quantity is available, fine, go there, select it, and then click on receipt. So we are now making a gate receipt. So this will now come into the receipt accounting. Now. So click on it, and then go there. So click on the show quantity, it will now automatically show all the receipt quantity, now, fine, click on it. The entire receipt quantity will be shown, now, fine. The 100 is expected on the purchase order. So it will now show you how much is expected, now, fine, go there. So receiving will not have any submit It is the gate receipt, actually. So the gate man is not going to make. You must set up the receiving option. So receiving parameters are not set. So this way, not throwing another, fine, go there. We will not set up the receiving option. Fine. Right click on the duplicate. So we are not set up the receiving parameter actually. Fine. Click on duplicate. We have to set up the receiving parameter actually. So click on it. I'll not go there. I will not go to the setup and maintenance and then we will not set up the receiving parameter actually. So go there. Click on it. I will not go to what? Go to search and then you go to the manage receiving parameters. Fine. Manage percentage. Fine. Receiving percentage. Fine. Para percentage. You go to the manage receiving parameter and then set up the receiving parameter for your all. T010. Fine. It's already coming. T011. Sorry. No one. So here, what happens? Whatever the mandatory one will now fill it up. Fine. So the remaining things will be seeing it uh, during the weekends actually. Fine. Zip routing is what? I know the standard. No, fine. The weekends will be seeing everything. The complete receiving parameter will be having a look at it. No, fine. A lot of discussions there. Fine. Go that one. I will not automatic. And then here, what happens? Go that is numeric. And then I will not say the next starting number is going to be three thousand. Fine. Three thousand. And then the RMA receipt routing order than the standard. No, fine. You want it. So we are now set up all the mandatory fields on this now. Fine. Click on save and close by which what happens? The receiving parameter now set fine. We'll now go there. In the receipt, what happens? If you click on the show receipt quantity, it has to show me as 100. It's not showing 100, fine. So while you're making a gate receipt, you will not say, mention the sub-inventory. Fine, click on gate receipt. So the GRN number is going to be created. Fine, click on it. So the 3000 is the GRN number. Fine, click on it. And then you can even ship number number is what? 123. And then the packing slip number is what? 456. Fine, go there. And then the shipping method is okay. Fine. Babel number is 789. Fine. Likewise, what happens? You can fill up everything. Fine. Bill of lighting is what? 12345. And then notes is what? I will not say notes one. <clears throat> Note one. Fine. Click on submit by which this is a basically a value addition for the management, actually. <clears throat> it is normally recommended. So that what happens is they can later on see what is the packing slip number which has come, what is the shipment number which has come, so they can very well analyze. Now. Fine. Click on shipment. Submit. So the GRN number of 3000 will be getting created because we already set up the receiving parameter for this now. <clears throat> so you'll not find the GRN number. Fine. The next number is about 3001 is the one. Fine. 3001 is the GRN number. So the PO number is 2000. For which what happens? The GRN number is 3001. Click on it. And then we'll not put away now. Fine. Click on it. So the GRN is going to be put away now. Fine. Click on it. <clears throat> we'll not perform or put away now. Fine. Go there. So click on the put away results. Results and then click on the put away. And then 3001, I'm going to put away now. Fine. 3001, go there. And click on search now. Fine. Click on search. And then we're going to make a put away. Select it and then click on put away. So we are now delivering it to the sub inventory. For which what happens? We need the sub inventory. Fine. Go there. So go there. Drop it down and then choose the sub inventory. We have got one RMS sub inventory. Fine. Go there. Click on it. The raw material sold. We are going to put away. <coughs> so click on it. And then click on submit. By which what happens? The whole activity of receiving is now completed. Receiving in the gate and then put away into the sub inventory is now created. We will now go on and check the stock. Now. Fine. Click on it. Click on done now. So it's now completed. We will now have a look at the stock. We'll not go there, click on it. We'll not go to the inventory and then have a look at it. Now, fine, click on go to the inventory and then have a look at the stock. Now, fine, click on it. Manage item quantities. We'll not query the item. Fine. So we got only one item on D01, fine, T01, and then give it a tap. The re reconcile test is now coming. Fine, click on search now. It'll not show the 100 quantities. The 100 quantities are available. Fine. Expand it and then see in which R and then which subunit is available. Now, we will not push it for costing actually. Fine, 100 quantities. Now, what happens? We go to the purchase orders. Fine, go there. So if you go and then make a search now, fine, click on it. It is now received actually. Fine, click on it. We click on search. The, so you have an inbuilt intelligence that will not show you, it will not receive. No, fine. So 100 quantities at a value of $200. No, fine. It's close for receiving, actually. Fine. If you click on the hyperlink of it, no, fine, click on it. you can see on the right hand side the inbuilt intelligence. Fine. It will be showing you that it is now ordered and then it is received also. 
<clears throat> ordered, received, and then delivered also, right? But it is not an invoice that it will not show you the inbuilt in business. Right? So you can even click on the view details and then have a look at it, right? It is ordered, received, and delivered, but it's not an invoice. Now, if I click on the view details, it will not show you everything. <clears throat> I click on the view details, it will show you everything. Fine. What is the 3000 is the receipt number? Fine, go there. You know, it is fine. Nothing has been returned actually. Fine, delivered is also 200. Fine, go there. Invoicing is it to happen. Now. Fine, go there. So go there. Manage item is everything is there. Fine. Now, what you do is we will not push it into the costing area. Now, fine. The costing setup has already been set yesterday. So we will not push this into costing. Now, fine, click on that now. I will not go there and then push into source. We'll go there, click on it. I will not go to that now. Fine, click on it. I will not go to the home icon and then I go to the tools and then I go to the scheduled process. I click on the home icon. I will not go to the tools. Fine. It's all received actually. Fine. Go to the I will not go to the tools. No, fine. Click on the tools. And then you go to the scheduled process. Fine. Click on it. And then I will not push it into costing. So, first, the receipt, whichever is taken the gate, whatever you go now. Fine. Click on the scheduled process. Fine. Go there. So, I will not say transfer transactions. Transfer personal fine. transactions from receiving to costing. So, transfer transactions from receiving to costing. I'm going to identify. So, this will be transferring it from the receiving. Whatever has been received to the gate will be pushed into the costing area. Fine. Click on OK. Now, fine. Go so go there. So click on submit. So we are not submitting it. So by which what happens is now coming. Next, what happens? We will now go and then transfer the transaction from inventory costing. Whatever has been put away has to be transferred to costing. Now fine. So click on the scheduling process. I will now say transfer transaction from inventory to costing. And change it to what? Inventory to costing. INB and then give it arrow. So it will be transfer transaction inventory costing. So whatever has been delivered also will be pushed into the whatever is this thing. So the cost organization is what T01. So we already created. So for a Transfer from the inventory to costing, what happens? The cost org is one commit interval, leave it as such. It will all be transferred to the interface tables of costing. Now, fine. They will all go into the interface tables of receipt accounting and cost accounting. So they will all go into the interface tables of receipt accounting and cost accounting. Fine. They're all waiting. You know, succeeded. You know, waiting, waiting when for the call. The next one is what we had to go on then create our cost accounting period actually. Fine. We had to go on then create our cost accounting period. And then open the periods actually. Click on it. We'll have open up. So before we open up, we have to ensure that what happened, the GL is open now. Fine. GL has to be open. Fine. No succeeded. Fine. I will not go there. Click on that now. Fine. It's all done. So we'll not go there. Click on it. We will not go on and have a look at the GL period, which is open or not. Fine. We'll not go to the GL now. Fine. General ledger. We'll not go to the general ledger now. Fine. Click on it. We'll not go to the general ledger. <clears throat> uh, general accounting. You go to the general accounting and then go to the period close now. Fine. So our chart of account, our what happens, our chart of accounts is what? Our ledger is what? US primary ledger. So for which what happens, we will not go on and have a look at it. No, fine, click on it, close now. Fine, for the US primary ledger, we will not see whether the periods are open for this month. No, fine, now we are working on not October. Fine, we will not see whether the US primary ledger is open or not. Fine, click on the period open. Fine, we will not choose the US primary ledger and then check whether it is open or not. Fine. So go there. So drop it down. The data access is what? US primary ledger. US, go there. And then use the prime, US primary ledger. Fine, we will not choose the US primary ledger. This is the one now. Fine, US primary ledger. Enter now. So click on OK now. Fine, we will not see this. Since financial teams are also working, they would have opened the period section. US Prime Manager, fine. Accounting period is 1024, it is open actually. And then the, the payable period also must be open. So the payable period also. So the GL and payables are very much open. The costing period, what happens, it is also open actually. Fine. It is also open. Fine. So they have opened even the costing periods also. Because what happens, the financial team is working. So costing is also open. Otherwise, what happens, costing we cannot open from here. Costing you have to open from the costing area only. Fine. So costing is also open. 1024 is already open for the US Prime Ledger. So done. So now what happens, you will not go to the area. Fine. Click on the home icon. We will not go to the costing directly, cost accounting directly. Fine. Click on it. You will not go to the what? Supply chain execution. We will not go to the supply chain execution and then we will not go to the cost accounting now. Fine. We will not go to the cost accounting. So we will not go to the cost accounting. Fine. Go to the component. We will not see the periods opening now. Fine. Click on it. We will not go there. Click on it. We will not go there. Click on it. I will not see what happens. Manage cost accounting periods. We will not go there. Fine. There it is not showing costing is already open. Fine. Click on the manage cost accounting periods. Fine. Click on the manage cost accounting periods. And then the cost org. Fine. It has to be open for a cost org. Even though it is not a ledger specific, it is a cost org specific now. Remember, it is a cost org specific and T01. I will not say start song. Fine. Start song. So for the US Prime Ledger, what happens? They have got their own cost organization that is open, but for my cost star, it is not open. It is not open. So current period is not open. So everything is not open actually. So we have to go on and open up every period now. Click on it. I will not select it. Click on it. I will not go to the view period details. I go to the view periods. So here, what happens is ours now. Fine, go there. So for our cost star, we had to open up everything. So Vision has got already one uh, US uh, some financial organization or something like that, the cost organization. Fine, that is all there. But for our cost org, we have to open up. And remember, we had to open up only one by one now. Fine. 0, 1, 24 is the first period. Fine. Go there. So click on the open target period. We are going to open up. Fine. So click on OK. Well, the only thing we have to click on OK. It gets open. And we cannot jump to three now. Fine. If you go on and try to jump it three, it will not say Poda Ponga. Fine. Click on it. Open target period. It will not allow at all. Only two is possible. 
So one by one only we can open now. Fine, we cannot jump to anything now. Fine, we want it. So we had to go there. So click on it. Open target period. We had to keep on opening one by one now. Fine, three. I'm now opening it up. Fine, click on it. Three opening up. Fine, three is open. Fine, click on the open target period. Four is coming. So it is like an inventory period of evils. Evils also what happens? We can open up only one by one. Here also what happens? We can open up only one by one now. Fine, click on it. So go there. So five is open. Fine, click on open target period. Fine, click on again. Fine, click on. <laughs> So click on open target period. So we'll now open up one by one. Seven up to ten, we had to open up. I click on open target period. And then eight, I'm opening it up. I click on it. And then go there. Click on it. I'm going to go there. So click on nine. And then I'm going to open that. Click on it. And then go there. So ten also will now open. So ten is also open. So all the ten periods are now open. Fine, go there. So we can very well perform the what happens there, the cost accounting. Now. So having opened it, the first activity, what you have to do is you have to bring the data which has now reached the interface tables of what happens the cost accounting to the base tables now. Thank you, Connor. We are going to bring it now. Thank you, Connor. We'll now go there. So we'll now go there. Click on it. I will now create cost accounting distributions. Fine. So whatever has reached the interface tables of cost cost accounting, what bring it to the what happens the base tables now. Click on the create cost accounting distributions by which what happens we'll bring it now. Thank you, Connor. I will now what happens we had to create a run control first of all. Thank you, Connor. We are going to create a run control. Thank you, Connor. I will now say it's a T01. I will now say it's a T01. Fine. I will now say run control. <laughs> So we have to create one run control for it and then enable the cost processor report also. Cost reports process also enabled. Now. Click on it. Enabled. And then go there. And then at the bottom one, the run control. All the things must be enabled now. Fine. The bottom one, you go to the actions. And then here, what happens? You go to the add row. So for our cost R, fine, T01. Fine, give it a time now. The cost R is coming. The cost book is T01. So we already created the cost R and cost book. Fine. What else? Fine. Go there. So it's a user defined. And then we can even give a cutoff date up to the month end now. Fine. Up to month end, whatever is coming, what happens? You can do it now. So go there. So go there. drop it down. I will not choose what 31 and then click on OK now. Fine, go there. No, 31, 10. Fine. So up to month end, whatever data is now reached in the interface tables, whatever it will be brought to the base tables. Fine, click on save. So by which whatever the run control is now. Now we will not schedule the process. So once when you schedule the process, the scheduled process will be running now. Fine. So one activity. In reality, what happens? We have to go to the advanced, go to the advanced, and then we have to what? Using a schedule, we have to run it on a frequent basis actually. In the event, what happens? They go there. Frequency, what happens? There? I will not say how <clears throat> I will not say every three hours or every four hours, depending upon the company's requirement. This will now bring all the data which has now reached the interface tables of cost accounting into the base tables of cost accounting every four hours. So this is how it will happen. Because we will not, we cannot run it again and again now. Fine, manually. Manual running is impossible. So we will be using a schedule. We will be running it every four hours actually. But since it is a training, what happens? I will not run only once now. I am not running only once. Fine. So as soon as possible, I will not submit it. Fine. In reality, they will all be running frequently. Fine. Every four hours or every three hours or whatever may be the frequency set by the financial team will be running it. Thank you also, you know. <coughs> it is not running. So it is not running. So once when this is completed, fine, go there. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not give a save and close. No, fine. Click on save and close. No done. No. Fine. Not running. And go there. Right click on the duplicate. No. Fine. Right click on the duplicate. Now what happens? Uh, before we run the first receipt accounting uh, distribution, what happens? Uh, we have to first of all run the cost accounting distribution once. Fine. There is the first one. And then afterwards, we can run the receipt accounting distribution. Fine. Go there. Come on. We'll now go to the tools. Now, if I click on the tools, and then here, what happens? You go there. You go to the scheduled process and have a look at it. Now, <coughs> click on it. That will be running over here. Click on it. It will be running. So here, what happens? There? The create cost accounting distribution is running. So we had to wait for it, and then afterwards, what happens? We had to run the cost accounting distribution. So we had to wait for it. Now, if I click on it. So go there. Now, what happens? There? Whatever has reached the base table, interface tables of what happens? There? Your uh, uh, receipt accounting, we will now bring it to the base tables. So first, we will now bring it to the cost accounting cost. Uh, what happens? The cost transactions, the inventory data to the base tables of cost accounting. Then afterwards, you run it. And later on, what happens? All of them will be running on a cycle actually every four hours. So later on, it is not a problem at all. Fine. So the first one, you have to do this now. Then only what happens? You do it. You go there, right click on the duplicate. We will now bring the data from the receipt accounting interface table to the base tables of receipt accounting. Okay. We will now go there. We will now go to the space. We will now go to the supply chain execution again. You'll go there. You'll go to the supply chain execution. And then here, what happens? You go to the receipt accounting. Fine. You'll go to the receipt accounting. So the data has already been pushed in the interface table of the receipt accounting. Fine. Go there. I will now drop down and then I will now choose. No, fine. Click on it. I will now go there. Drop down. And then here, what happens? I'll now go there. And then choose my BU. I'll now choose my BU. Fine. My BU is what? T01 BU. And then click on apply. So here, what happens? The cost of receipts is nothing. <clears throat> so 100, 100 quantities at $2 has been received. But nothing has got in the now because it is now in the interface tables. We had to bring it to the base tables. So we had to wait for it. Now I click on it. We will now go to the monitor process and go there. Come on. Remember, there is no periods for receipt accounting, whereas cost accounting has got a period. Cost accounting has got a period. So what you have to do is you go there and then you go there. Directly go and then create your cost accounting distributions. So we can go there. And then here, whatever you can now go and then create the cost account receipt accounting distribution. Whereas for the cost accounting, we have to first of all open the periods of GL and then the cost accounting. And then finally, what happens? We had to do that. What happens? The create 
uh, receive a co great cost accounting distribution. Whereas for the residual accounting, we can now run it directly without doing anything at all. So go to the model process and then wait for the cost accounting to come to the base tables because for the first run, what happens is we need it now. Fine, the great cost accounting distribution. On the first run, we want to complete it. Then afterwards, the next one onwards, we can do it in any fashion. One, one cycle has to be done by a cost accounting, first of all, and then afterwards do the residual. The next cycle onwards, we can do it now, fine, because it populates a certain amount of base tables, basically. I click on it. Over there. So click on it. Right? Certain amount of base tables. So it becomes eligible for what happens. They're doing the accounting very properly, actually. Go there. Go there. Go there. So many things are coming. Right? I will not, what happens, restricted to mine. Now, fine, click on it. I will not say PRC 21. Right? The PRC 21 is the one. So go then make a search, fine. Only my concurrence will not show. Now, fine, click on it. Go there. Go there. My concurrence is just too much. Go there. So create cost accounting distribution has got succeeded now. Now I can make the receipt accounting distribution. Now <clears throat> go to the receipt accounting, click on the create receipt accounting distribution, and click on it. So here to come as to $200. So I click on it. The business unit is what? T01. Thank you, so, go there. so click on submit. So once when you submit it, the data from the interface tables of receipt accounting will be brought to the base tables. So click on that. So click on submit. So once it is submitted, fine. No submitted. Now what happens? You can now see on the infolet, the cost of receipts will be coming once when the import process is now complete. I click on it. No, go there. So now the data is now coming. Import transactions is now coming. Now. Import transactions, my interface table is called. So once when the import is completed, what happens? It will be brought into the base tables. So import transact import transactions, the interface tables, the receipt accounting into the base tables now fine. That is running. So we'll now wait for it to complete now fine. It will not trigger one more, what happens? The child job. It will not spawn a child actually. The parent will be spawning another child now <clears throat> for creating the distribution. For distribution creation, the import process will be creating one more distribution concurrent actually. And that will be responsible for creating the, uh, or the distribution. Like the one. Go there, click on it, close it. You know, success. Now, what about create receipt accounting distributions now? Sub process. So the main is now uh, what about succeeded, and then what about the now small the child bank that is now creating the uh, receipt accounting distribution. So by which what happens once when the receipt is completed, you can now see on the info let itself the cost of receipt will be two hundred dollars. So click on it. No, go there. So the sub process is now running, running, running. So once when it is completed, what about you can now see the cost of receipts in our BU, fine. Right? Is the BU specific one? It will be two hundred dollars. Now we have to populate the account very properly. Now click on it. You know, go there. Click on it. We have to set up the accounts properly. So it will not show a lot of accounts on this. Now click on it. <clears throat> so two hundred dollars is received actually in the game. So then what happens? We have to set up the accounts and then what happens? They do it now, fine. Right? And remember, account setting is supply chain responsibility and not financial responsibility. Financial will never come because they have got a lot of activities. You only get to set up all the accounts actually, right? In the PO accounts we are set up here also. We have to set up the account. So it's not done now, fine. So you do the overview and then what happens? You refresh it. Once when you refresh it, we can now see a not on the cost accounting. You now go to the receipt accounting. In the receipt accounting, what happens if you refresh it? You'll now see the cost of receipts will be coming. Click on it. The cost of receipts will be two hundred dollars. So on the table, fine. Two hundred dollars is the cost of receipts. Fine. You go there. We will now review it now. Click on it. We will now go to the review receipt accounting distribution and then have a look at it now. Fine. Click on review over it. And then here, I will, say, I will now say item starts with. Fine. Go there. I will now say T01. Fine. And then make a search now. Fine. Click on search. I will now show you. Fine. Click on search. Item starts with. And then what I will be showing you the receipt accounting distribution is duplicate. Fine. Go there. Now you can see the distribution is now processed. The receipt is now processed. Fine. Purchase order. You can now see the purchase order number is 2000. Fine. Go there. Click on it. Inventory. Fine. Go there. Item is now there. The description. Fine. Go there. Everything is there. 3000 is the receipt number. Fine. Everything is coming on this. Now we had accounting. Accounting is also your responsibility. The supply chain team's responsibility now. Fine, the receipt into receiving. Fine, go on, go there. So if you go there and then clean the bottom fine, the cost information is coming. So the item cost is not two dollars in the receiving area. If you go to the distribution, it will now say it, it hits what are distribution. Receiving inspection to accrual. So receiving inspection to accrual has been hit now. Fine, click on it. Now 200, 200, fine, go there. So now what happens? There? If you go to the journal entries, no journal entries are created. Click on it. So distribution is process. If you go there, the journal entries are not created. Let us not do the create accounting. Now no, go there. Click on it. We will not run the create accounting and then we will not process the distribution. Now it says distributions are only process. It is not at accounted actually. Fine, go there. Click on it. We will now run the create accounting. Remember, create accounting is not your activity. It is the financial activity. But once when they run, you should not have any error actually. In this place, there will not be an error. Right? If you know the error, then it will be okay. But if you are not set up, the error will be coming. Fine, click on it. I will not do the create accounting. We will not see whether any error is coming on the transaction state as well. Ledger is what? US primary ledger. USP and then give it a no point. USP and then give it a US primary ledger. So here, sub ledger is what? Receipt accounting. In the sub ledger, use the receipt accounting now. Fine. Receipt accounting, I'm choosing now. Fine. Receipt accounting, I'm choosing it. Fine. Process category, leave it back. Fine. Accounting status mode is final. Fine. Go there. And then here, summary, I will not make it the detail of Franklin Connor. I will not transfer to GL also. So if my, uh, what happens, your liability and accrual are properly set, what happens, it will be doing all these things also. 
We are not set at the liability. And then Sakrol also fine. Everything is set. So I hope that this will not give any problem at all. Thank you for that. So we are not set up the liability. We are not set up what? Your PO liability as well as the AP liability. Everything has been set now. Thank you for that. So the PO liability and then AP liability, everything has been set. Thank you so, so, so I hope that there will not be any problem at all. You go to the monitor process. Thank you for that. So liability accrual. <laughs> liability accrual, accrual has been set now. Thank you for that. accounting. So since we already set up everything, so this should not give any problem at all to me. We will not see whether any problem is coming. Otherwise, what happens? You have to rectify the problem. So click on data point. So what happens there? So here, what I have not done is what? The receipt accounting at the purchasing receipt, uh, receipt accounting mapping set has not been set. I've done only on the cost accounting, remember. I've done only on the cost accounting, so it will not show a problem. I, don't know, I think it will be uh, giving a problem, actually. On, not on the purchasing accounting, but on the cost accounting I've set up. So credit accounting is there, fine. So what happens? It will be finally what happens? It will be giving a report also. So we're not trying to post it on fine. The post journalists are coming back. So this posting is happening for other one. Ours, if it is not successful, it will not post at all. Thank you. We'll not have a look at it. Thank you. No go back to it. You will not. What happens? It will be giving a report also. It will not say what are the errors which are there in this. So click on post submitted journal process. Thank you. I don't succeed, I don't succeed. Now, what happens? Finally, yeah, what happens? I create accounting execution report is coming. The execution report will not tell you what are the errors which are there. No, fine. I, I think I have not set up the purchasing receipt accounting. Fine, that will be showing error. No, fine. Not. No, go back. You know, coming, coming, coming. Fine, go back. No, so go back. So it's not running. No, fine. So we'll now wait for it to complete. So once it is completed, we'll now publish and then have a look at nothing. Run, run, run. We will not take five more minutes now today. Five four zero five will not complete because of what happens. I have to uh, stop at a logical point now. Fine. I have to stop this at a logical point. Fine. Go to the one and go back to one. I will not go to the output and then here what happens. I will not click on the republish the output. Fine. Click on republish and then go there and then have a look at it. So if there is anything problem, it will not show you this. Now I click on the PDF file. In the PDF file. Open on the PDF file. It will not show you all the errors. So here what happens. Uh, receiving two events and then what happens. Uh, there are number of events. Two is error. There are two errors there. So there are two errors. The trade accrual is a different one. The receiving has got two errors actually. And go down. So here, what about the MLC? Uh, in our US primary letter, no fine. So go there. So uh, these are all what 3001 is ours, no fine. It's saying invalid, no fine. The input source do not map to what is one. So there is an error, no fine. There are some errors or not. On 3001 is our GRN number. Fine. For this also here in the receiving area, fine. It's not showing on. This is for the US primary, not this one. So US primary letter, what about the we got two errors actually. There are two errors. Also. So there are two errors, are fine. So accrual is not set actually. So accrual on the receiving purchasing is not set actually. Fine. And then what happens? Uh, you have got what? One more thing. Fine. Uh, mapping set uh, defined accrual. And then here what happens is also saying accrual. Fine. Everything is accrual. Okay. Fine. There is some error. Fine. So on our 3001 GRN number, we have got invalid intention. Fine. Close it now. So we will now go there. Clean. Close it now. Fine. Go there. I will now go and then see in this place. Now. Fine. Click on it. We will now go to what? Manager receipt accounting. Fine. Go there. So we will now make a search. Now. Fine. It was distribution process. We make a search. It will not show all the errors. It will be what happens. Accounting errors will be showing on that. So it is the error actually. So go there. And then we will not see the errors in the character error. So expand it. Expand the error. Visit in the inspection. So it says what? The input source value does not map to an output value called what happens? Accrual. No. Fine. So accrual has to be set actually. Fine. The accrual is not set actually. Fine. The accrual is not set. So we will not go there. I will not. What happens? Right click on the duplicate. We will not set up for the purchasing accounting, not for the cost accounting actually. We will not go there. Click on it. I will not go to the place, fine. I will not go to the what happens. We'll go there. So click on it. I will not go to the setup and maintenance, fine. Click on setup and maintenance. And then previously I have gone to the manufacturing and the supply chain management and go there. This time what happens? I will not go to the purchase procurement. I will not go to the procurement. Fine. Go to the procurement. And then the procurement I will not go for the manage mapping set, fine. Manage percentage, fine. Map percentage, fine. Set percentage. So we have to set up this account. Thank you, The procurement, fine. Go there. So I will not use the first one, fine. Manage mapping set for the first procurement transaction account, fine. Go there. So remember, this mapping set do not have any scope. Only for the manufacturing and supply chain management, the cost management has got a scope. Fine, here it is not having the procurement will not have any scope. Fine, click on it. There's only one entity. Fine, click on it. I will not go to the place. Fine, I will not say what I was accrual. Accrual. And accrual. Accrual. Accrual is not coming. Fine, I will not find the inspection. NSP. So one is what? The receiving inspection account. Fine, I will not say receiving. Fine, receiving. All right, and all of them. And then I click on search. No, click on search. Uh, receiving inspection account. So here, what it is saying? Fine. If you go to the review, fine. Go there. So it's only saying accrual. No, fine. And the input source do not matter. Accrual. No, fine. Accrual. I'm not showing you. In the manner matters. Fine. Accrual has to come. Accrual. Fine. Click on 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 accrual. Fine. 
and then make a search and make a search. Nothing is coming. It's a matter of purchasing. A goal is not coming at all. Hmm. Ah. In this place, whatever they go there, they view. And then the bottom, whatever they go there, and then have a look at nothing to come back. Then there's a cruel no effect on it. No cruel and expand it. The living inspection point. Zipped into inspection actually. Mm. So everywhere it is not showing only accrual of no This is the inspection account, the living inspection point. So everywhere, whatever is that in the management mapping set, accrual. Accrual is the mapping set no fact upon it. It is not set at all. Accrual mapping set. There is the one is not showing you a point of one. And then the zipped into inspection point of the set is showing accrual is not set. And then we'll now go there and then see the matters. What about everything would have been what about the chain that's what is the purchasing point of that. Is the expense accrual, but I want an asset accrual actually. Mm -hmm. If you go on and make a search number accrual, that's a show. Right? You know, show me. So many people have made so many custom on my other and say accrual, right? Entry number. So click on search number, click on search. And then one more setup is there, fine. Right click on the duplicate, fine. So whether they have no overridden hours or not, fine. You know, however, you know, you know, so if uh, somebody has overridden our tab and tab. That also it will not work. No, click on it. It will not go there. Click on it. So click on search. No, I click on search. And then here, what I was going to say, manage personage fine, sub personage fine, OPT personage fine, called sub ledger accounting options. Manage sub ledger accounting options. Manage sub ledger accounting options. Right? So manage or sub ledger accounting options. The one fine is recommended. I will not choose my ledger. No, fine. The US primary. Go there. So click on search now and we'll see whether anybody has overridden it all. So I will not go to the purchasing now. Click on it. I will not go to the purchasing. Uh, what if we want to go to the purchasing? I will not query here now. You are on the entry now. It will be coming. So go there. So click on accounting options. Click on accounting options. And then here, whatever somebody has changed it. That's why it's not coming. I will not go there. Drop down. I will not choose the purchasing tab defaulting. So this is the default one. Somebody has changed it. Frankly, on seven close. Now what happens is go there. Frankly, go now. So now what happens is go there. I will now go to what? I will now go to the review receipt accounting distribution and then go there. I will now again create the distribution. This time what happens is it will work proper because somebody has changed it. Frankly, on it. I will now go to what? Create receipt accounting distribution. This time what happens is it won't have any error. So for that, I will now put the version of T01. So it is a purchase accounting defaulting plan. I will now change the tab and tab. So click on submit. Now frankly, on submit. <coughs> go there. So it's not running. Frankly, on it. Now wait for the monitor to complete. So once when it is completed, you will not find no errors at all. <coughs> because we have set up everything now, fine. That's why it's not coming actually. Fine. We're to transaction fine. We're not running it. Create receipt according distribution of one fine. Create receipt according distribution of past. <coughs> so you know, again importing the transaction on this one. Create receipt according distribution. No, not required. I have to run the uh, what the create accounting action. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. No, I click on it. I will not run the create accounting. I click on the create accounting. So click on the create accounting. So go there. I will not go to the receipt accounting. I click on it. I will not go to the receipt accounting. Receipt accounting. Then ledger is what? US and that primary ledger. I click on the US primary ledger. So I will not make it the details. I'm the SS and then click on sorry. So this one I am running it for my tab and tab action. The tab and tab will be fully explained on an accounting training actually. What are the bond process and wait for it? So once when the credit accounting is completed, this time what happens? You don't have any error at all. It will all be getting fully accounted. Credit accounting is running. So our tab and tab has been set actually. So once when this completed, you will see that you know change the. Sub ledger accounting options in ours now. Thank you for that. Us now. Because the default ones are ready, but uh, if you're going to go for a custom one, it has to be fully set actually. But again, a big training. Fine. You attend a training on cost accounting, so they will be teaching you all. Since we are concentrating only on the receipt accounting reconciliation, we are not uh, doing those things now. Thank you. Credit accounting and all. So no succeeded. No, we'll not go to what? Uh, you go to the war, we'll not go there, and then we'll not query for this. No, we'll not review the receipt accounting distribution. No, I will not say item starts with the T01. And then make a search. Now, click on search. We'll not find it. It is now fully accounted, actually. So, it's still an error only. No, still an error. Go to the journal entries. 
Hi, welcome back all of you, Nana here. And then uh, yesterday we have completed the distribution creation on the receipt accounting actually. So let us now go on and have a look at it again. No? Fine, click on it. No. Click on the home icon. And then I go to the supply chain execution. Supply chain execution. And then here I go there, I go to the receipt accounting. I go to the receipt accounting. And then on the receipt accounting, you drop down and then choose your BU. Fine. Here you click on it, drop down and then choose your BU. It will not show you how much has got accrued actually. Is it T01? Fine. Click on apply. You can now see what happens. This much has got accrued actually. Fine. $200 has got accrued. There is no exception at all. There is no unmatched accruals. And then what happens? And then there is no write up at all. You are going to see these things. <clears throat> so, that. so here, the biggest issue is what? The receipt accounting reconciliation is the biggest issue. We will not come to that. So we will not have a look at it. First of all, this $200, which has been received in the gate. Actually. We will not go to what? Review receipt accounting distribution. The item starts on what? T01. And then make a search. No, if I click on search, it will be coming on the So it is initially having a distributions process. When I did the, did the credit accounting, it has ended in the error, actually. When I did the credit accounting, it has ended in the error, actually. And then you go there. So here, see the transaction cost, taxes, I think nothing is there. The purchase order cost is $2. If you click on the distribution, you can now see what happens. The receiving inspection is the debit side, and then the contra entry is accrual. Accrual is the biggest problem in many, many companies, actually. Accrual is not got 200. 200 is there. And then go down. And then here, what happens? This is the one. And then the bottom, the taxes are nothing because we don't have any location-based taxes to sit down. So we are working on our own locations and so there is no location-based taxes actually. So everything is zero. Actually. So now receiving inspection to accrual is the one where what happens is we have to set up the accounts also. Fine, go to the journal entries. If you go to the journal entries, what happens is you know, find a lot of errors on this. Fine, go there. Receiving inspection, now fine, this is what. So if you go there, it is receiving inspection, fine. You know, having all the accrual errors. Fine. So uh, receiving, what happens is uh, 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 receiving inspection account and then the accrual account both has to be set on the receipt accounting area. And remember, uh, if this is ending up an error, uh, it is the responsibility of the supply chain team to order the correction, not the financial team. Financial team do not have time at all to set up all these accounts. You only have to take up the account number and then set up. The account number will be given by the financials, but you only have to set up the accounts. I will not go there. Right click and then duplicate. It is on the receipt accounting area. It is on the receipt. Account. Previously, what happens is we did on the cost management, right, on the manufacturing and supply chain management. Now we have to go to the purchasing receipt accounting now. You click on it. Go there. <clears throat> I will not go to the setup and maintenance. You go to the setup and maintenance. And then here, or when they go there. And then we will not go to the place, man. I will not go to the procurement now. Fine. The setup is procurement. In the procurement, you go to the manage mapping set. Manage percentage, man. Map percentage, man. Set percentage. You go to the manage mapping set. And then not on the procurement transaction account. Fine. That is for this. We have to go to the receipt accounting area. Fine. Manage mapping set of the receipt account. Manage mapping set of the receipt accounting. And 
So it doesn't have any scope. Only uh, what happens, your cost accounting will be having a scope. Whereas in the purchasing accounting, we'll not have any scope at all. And click on the hyperlink of it directly. Click on the hyperlink. And then here, what happens, I will now go to the receiving inspection now. And click on it. So here, uh, 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 what happens, you go there and then click on the receiving inspection. So receiving inspection. So here we have two receiving inspection. I don't know which one is using it actually. Fine, let us know. Set it up on this and then see you now. Fine, receiving inspection. So in this place, what happens? It says what? It is a receiving inspection to accrual. Fine, receiving inspection to accrual. So I don't know which one is setting up. So let us now go there and then set up this and then after it's coming. Fine, click on the receiving inspection. And then go there. So the uh, what's called the US chart account is the same one now. Fine, click on it. For which what happens? We will now add our organization also. I will not click on it. I will not take up the copy. Okay. This account will be given by the financials. Remember, I will not take a copy of it. Take of it. I will not click on plus. I will not add my org. My org is what? T011. Remember, it must be proper. If it is a small T, it will not work at all. Inventory category, it drop down and then choose the star in the top. Item number is star. <clears throat> and then here, account, I'm pasting it now. Let's click on it. It is not done. So we are now set up the receiving inspection account. Fine. Whether the receiving inspection account or RA is used, I'm not very sure about it. Fine. Click on seven close and then see. It is not done. Fine. This or this, we will not see afterwards. Now, afterwards, what happens next is accrual. Accrual is the biggest problem. Fine. Accrual is the one fine, which you have to set up. Accrual account. You have to set up. So accrual is uh, what happens. There are three places where we are setting it up now. I will now right click and then duplicate. <clears throat> and then I will now go and then have a look at the purchase order. <clears throat> I click on it. I will now go to the what purchase orders now, fine. Right? Purchase orders. I will now go to the procurement and then purchase orders. <clears throat> I will go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders. So here uh, we have an accrual account. It will again be given by the financials, remember. You only have to set up, but financials will be giving you the account. I will now go to the manage orders. So let us now query the 2001 order now. So 2001 is the order number five. So 2001 is the order number five. Make a search for it. Come back, click on it. And then click on the hyperlink of it. And click on the hyperlink of it. So hyperlink will not edit at all. Fine. If you click on search now, hyperlink will not edit at all. And 2001 is the one. The business unit. The buyer is also one or same thing. You know, right? uh, the order number is only 2001. Huh? I will now remove the order number. Of that. So uh, the supplier, I will now say it's a T01. No, it's the ABC concept. Fine. Right? It's ABC Consulting. <coughs> so click on search now. The order number is 2001. So click on it. It's 2000. Sorry, I made a mistake. It's 2000. The order number is 2005. Click on the hyperlink of it. Hyperlink will not take you to the edit mode. Now, click on it. It's not, it's not closed for receiving also. Click on it. It will not take the edit mode. It will only, can only view it now. Hyperlink will not only view it. Actually. So click on it. We are now viewing it. So order number 2000, we are now viewing it now. For two hundred dollars, actually, it's close for receiving. Everything has been received now. Hundred coins is at two dollars. Two hundred dollars has been received now. I click on it, and then I go to the distribution, and then have a look at the what happens. I go there. I will now go to the distribution and click on the distribution, and then here again we will now click on the details on the right hand side. It is the details. So if you click on the details, it will never go to the edit mode at all. And click on the details, it will never go to the edit mode at all. <clears throat> it will only for viewing actually. Go down. So here we have an accrual account. What happens? Uh, I will not put something. Right? This you have to. What happens? Uh, talk to them and then note it down because I am not aware of it. Right? This one I am not really aware of it. Right? So uh, PO accrual. Mm. PO accrual. I will not take a copy of it. Right? PO accrual one. Mm. So uh, you talk to the financials and understand about how they will now give these accounts actually. And PO accrual the one. So PO accrual the one. And then what happens? I will know how what uh, one AP accrual now. Fine. Right? I will not say only AP accrual. Accrual. In fact, what happens? The, the you know, accounting has to be learned only from them actually. So two to two seven zero. Right? I will not right click and then duplicate. I will not have a look at the AP accrual and duplicate it. <laughs> so click on it. And then here, what will go there? I now go to what? You go to the setup and maintenance, <coughs> and then go there. And then click on search and find what that manage common options. Fine, you manage percentage man. common options. Fine, what the procurement payables and procurement actually. So go that entry now. You go to the manage common options for payables and procurement common options for manage common options for pay mm -hmm. payment payable provision. Manage common options C O M or W M. Manage common options for payables and procurement. <laughs> So it's not coming, fine. Click on it. I will not query for my business unit. But is it T01 or the one? Fine, give it a tap. 
So we have an AP liability account. Fine, I have not set up this. I go there. AP liability. AP accrual or AP liability. We'll not, we'll not, don't call them as AP accrual. We we'll don't call it the liability. Liability. It's not called as AP liability. I think we call it. And then I will not have one. Receipt accrual. Receipt accrual. Receipt accrual. So this. So how to set up, I don't know. Fine. I'm not giving different different values. No, fine. It's not zero, zero, it's not zero. I will not give receipt accrual as 80 now. Fine. So it'll not come to this please. So here I will not add this account. Fine. Go to the second and go there. So I will not click on the accrual. So click on the accrual. I'm not going to add the receipt accrual. Fine. The receipt accrual. Fine. Choose the viewers and start up accounts and then go there. I will not click on it. I will not take a copy of this account now. Fine. So take a copy of the account. Accrual is a liability account, remember. So click on it. Click on plus. And then go there. It is a T011. Fine, go there. Code it. And then drop down. <clears throat> and then choose the star now. Fine. In item number is also a star. And then here I will now paste it. And then you give a tab now. Fine. The 22210, I will now make a change. Now. Fine. Click on the magnifier icon of this now. And then I will not change it. Now. Fine. Click on it. Now see. On the 222, how many accounts are coming? Fine. Click on search now. Mm -hmm. So on the 222 front, whatever they go there, click on search now. Ah, uh, we have what? Uh, what are the accounts we are given? Fine. So we are given seventy, uh, and then uh, zero zero, and then we will not put eighty. You know, we'll not put eighty. Some uh, like claims payable is coming. Fine. And anyhow, everything is liability actually. Anything starting on two two is a liability. Fine. Click on okay. It's not liability. So click on okay now. Fine. Click on okay. And then there's eighty. You know, fine. So my receipt accrual is this, but I'm not very sure about they have to. They all have to be different or same. Fine. This you discuss the financials and understand it. Fine. So we provide the accrual. A three different things. One is the PO accrual, one is the AP liability on the common options, and then one is the receipt accrual. Fine, receipt accrual on the purchasing accounting mapping set. Actually, I'm giving it different, but uh, I'm also not very sure. Right? Fine, take on it. So click on it and then give a save. No? Fine, for my organization, I gave a save and close. Now we will again run that. What happens to create accounting? Then go back to it. We'll again run the create accounting. So this time, what happens? We will now see that our idea is what the journal entries. There should not be any X mark and the star mark should not come at all. So, but whether he is using a receiving receiving inspection or receiving inspection or I'm not very sure about it. Fine. We are now done the receiving inspection. Fine. I will not go to the credit accounting. <clears throat> go to and then here, now, now choose it to what as a receipt accounting. Receipt accounting. And receipt accounting is the one. Fine. Ledger is what? US primary ledger. US primary ledger is the one. Fine. We are not putting the US primary ledger. <clears throat> go to the credit accounting. Will it be fine? Fine. When it's okay, fine. Uh, not somebody. I will not make it as a detail. And then I'm not going to post the GL also. Fine. I'm not going to push it to the year also. In reality, they will now make only a draft now. Afterwards, what happens? The financial team will be running a real account. Remember, a create accounting is not ever activity. You have to create up to the distribution only, but you have to ensure that what happens in this place, when they create the accounting, it should be what happens accounted. It has to come as accounted when they create. But you, you will now be responsible of the distribution process, to, but a create accounting should succeed for them if you set up properly. Right? That's what else. But it is your responsibility, remember. No, I have, again and again, because my, tele, my students were saying, sir, they all put everything on our head now. Fine, what is And go to this place, fine, click on create accounting. So go back, click on it. I'm not posting it, fine, click on submit. My students are saying, <clears throat> in two other projects, the supply chain team has to, what happens, set up all the accounts, actually. <clears throat> and then go there, click on it. And then go there, click on it. So click on cancel, no, and I will now go to the what monitor process. So click on the home icon, and then you go to the tools, and then what happens, you go there, T01. Not closing also. So something is gone, fine. Not closing, fine. Click on oh my god, <laughs> and then you go to the tools and then have a look at the schedule process. So go to the tools and then go to the schedule process. Now, this create accounting is going to run now. <clears throat> so go there, and then I will now search on my name. Now, what happens? Others will not be coming at all. And then only my concurrence will be visible over here. I click on it, searching it, and then now import journal is running now. And then finally, it will now give a what happens execution output also. So import journal is running. It is now completed. So the post journal is also running. <coughs> so the credit accounting, fine. They will be running it on a frequent basis. Right? It is a responsibility of the financial team to do it now. But setting up the accounts is supply chain's responsibility. Because they got so many accounts to be set. And so they ask all the ACM accounting you set. But they will not give the account numbers. And account number they will give. And remember, preferably, what happens? Get it on not on a verbal manner. Fine. Write a mail and then ask them all the accounts. So that what happens tomorrow, there should not be any uh, what happens uh, discrepancy or any uh, what happens say I told something, you did something. Fine. Not mm.
So click on the execution report and then we will not republish it. Create accounting execution report is not succeeded. Now the bottom what happens? They go there and then we will not republish it. And click on the republish here. And we'll do it. So click on the wheel icon and then export to PDF. Now click on now and export to PDF. So we are exporting it to PDF. And then have a look at now. Have a look at so go there. Not coming. So go there. So here what happens? The number of errors was previously two not has come to one actually. Right? Is the trade accrual is okay, right? but receiving itself is having an error. Now. Having error. And go there. Come on. Receiving, receiving. So here, what happens? I will not see uh, whether our uh, uh, what happens uh, the um, appropriate or uh, the primary ledger fine was invalid journal entries is two actually. Fine was go down fine how about it? And then we will now look at our fine uh, the transaction number is so and so now fine. So ours is three thousand one now fine. One thousand two is not ours actually. One thousand two is not ours. So three thousand one is the one fine. One thousand two is okay fine. One thousand two. And then how look at three? Well, it's very very difficult. To, what happens? I understand this thing. Fine. Three thousand is one. Three thousand is ours. So the receiving inspection account fine was account. <coughs> Uh, 200 is ours now, fine. It's ours. And then uh, intercompany is okay, fine. That is, it will be hearing so many accounts actually. Fine. I don't know how it's all coming. Uh, uh, 3001 is ours, fine. Maybe this also may not be ours, no, fine. <laughs> so I would have given a different number actually, fine. The receipt number, GRN number should have been different actually. Receiving inspection, fine. So 360 is also, no, again, what happens? There's so many things are coming actually. Uh, not coming at all, fine. So this may be a total uh, transactional journal entry actually. Uh, in future, what I will go there. And then have a look at nothing gone. Uh, uh, is not an open or future interval period on this one. So is a two twenty twenty one fine. This is not ours actually. Fine. Not ours. So we don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the top itself will not see this one. on it. The accounting date fine twenty twenty five is okay. Fine. Those are all different accounts. No fine. Not ours actually. So I don't think uh, nothing of ours is enough. Right? Use primary letter is the only one, but not 1,002. Right? So the ours might have got passed actually. Right? Ours is 3,001 actually. So in the in the summation, what happens? 1,002 is coming. So let us know. Go there and then have a look. Right? So you know that. So click on search again. Right? Click on search again. And then what happens? The transaction status has to come properly. Right? Click on search. You see whether it is now accounting accounted actually. So click on search. Right? Final accounted date. So this should come for the financial team actually. That means what? Whatever I set up on the receiving, the receiving inspection is okay, and not receiving inspection RA. Right? Receiving inspection RA is not equal. They have not used it, so receiving inspection. So it is final accountant. This is how they will get it. So it is your responsibility to what about the accounting properly. It will not give you all the accounts. Account, 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 everything is coming. So, so uh, why is intercompany and coming and all? I am not aware of it. No, fine. So intercompany fine. that they will not teach you. <clears throat> if you attend uh, what about the costing training, they will not teach you. Fine. No, fine. Some intercompany is also coming, receiving inspection intercompany. And then what happens again in this place also is not coming. <clears throat> is a contra entry for some accrual to intercompany. So, now it is final account. Now our activity of what setting up the account on the receipt accounting is complete. Now the real challenge begins. So we have received how 100 quantities at $2. 100 quantities at $2. So the receiving number is about 3,001 now. 100 quantities at $3 we are receiving. 100 quantities have been received. Remember, accrual is quantity based. Accrual is quantity based. Fine. So, quantity in the source document is sorted. So, quantity is very, very important. It is represented in the money. It is now represented in money, and then it is now quantity is accrual. Accrued quantity. Fine. Accrued is quantity. Quantity in the P, very, very one. So, each fine. The quantity is very, very important and not the money. But uh, financially, what happens is they will not tell only this. Now, out of 100, whatever the supplier has supplied. <clears throat> so, the supplier has promised the requester the requester is in the mechanical department electrical department that he will now provide you what the test certificates the what happens your inspection certificate and then all the uh, certificates but he has not provided so he has now also provided the warranty certificate and guarantee certificate he has not provided and he has uh, the requester has asked him what happens your uh, the standard operating procedures basically and he has all not provided and then he has asked for two years pass he has not provided so there may be so many lacunas on the receipt actually but he's saying that I will not do it. But he has not done it. So what this guy, the request will do is, he will now simply send an email to him. What happens is, please, what happens is, do not pay 10% of the bill. Even though we received 100 quantities, but certain supplies are not fulfilled by the supplier actually. So retain some 10% actually. <clears throat> this is called retain agent. Fine. I'm going to, he's going to retain some 10% actually. <clears throat> so while AP clerk is now going to process, he will not process for 100 quantities, but he will not process the payment only for 90 quantities. So the remaining 20s, what happens? Uh, we are expecting something. Even the financial team also will now say that you know, he has uh, what happens? He has given assurance that what happens? Our turnover is now across one million dollar. 
So they have asked them to give them the profit and loss statement and balance sheet of the previous year. Uh, he has not supplied it. So there may be so many reasons because of which what happens is there will be something which will be withheld, even though the quantity is fully paid, fully delivered actually. So this is called what happens a reconciliation we are doing. Fine. So now we are going to retain 10, 10 quantities, 90 quantities only you are going to pay in the payables actually. So this happens in many, many companies now. Just to keep a check on the supplier because the supplier wants when he pays, he will never come back at all. So what happens is they will not keep a check on the supplier. So we'll not go to the papers. No, Michael. Before we go to the papers, what happens? We have to ensure that what happens uh, on the what's called on the accounting print. When we go to the place, man, the accounting must be set. No, Michael. Let's be open. No, Michael. I will not go there. I will not go to what uh, your general accounting. Fine. Go to the general accounting. And then go to the period close. <clears throat> go to the period close. And then go to the period close. And then query your periods. No, Michael. So the US primary ledger. So GL is open, and then the payables also open. So this must be open. Then only what happens? You can make a payment. First of all, you have to ensure. So financial team is also working on this instance and so what happened? They already opened the periods for 1024. Otherwise, we had to open the periods. Now, remember, fine, we had to open the periods. You had to click on it and then open the periods. Right? No. And then similarly, payables also, you had to click on and open the periods. Right? Costing, we are not opening here. We are opening up separately and then we have seen it already. So this is the first step. And the next is what? You had to go there, fine, click on it. So the periods are open now. Right? Click on it. Then afterwards, what happens? You have to ensure that the invoice option is not properly set, actually. You know, what is the setup and maintenance? <clears throat> and then from the FSM area, Right. On the FSM area, you go there, go to the financials, <clears throat> go to the financials, and then this is a scope specific task. And so, what happens? You go there, I don't know, say manage, find mm -hmm. invoice options. This has to be searched only from here now, find right? manage invoice options. The one, so go there, and then the scope is already there, find click on it. This has to be set. Then, only what happens is we can process the payment now. So, all the fees must be properly set again. What happens is this is not my cup of tea, and then what happens? I have not filled up some some values over here now, find click on I did it, but uh, what happens? I'm not knowledgeable on this one. So here, whatever you go there, this is the immediate, and I put it and here also immediate. So whatever is the mandatory one, I put it. The remaining, I don't know. So whatever is mandatory, I filled up something. So this is you have to learn. Once when you learn payables, they will not teach you about how to set up the invoice options actually. Okay, we we'll cancel. So it is also set. So once when you are uh, GL period is open and the invoice period is open, we can very well create an invoice. Okay, go so, so I will not click on the home icon. <clears throat> now what happens? I will not go to the payables, and then we will not create an invoice. Okay, go I will not go to the payables. So go there, click on I will go to the papers. No, it must have gone. Payables, no, go there. So go to the payables. So go to the payables. Go to the payables and then go to the invoice. Now you're going to get the invoice. And the requester has already given a uh, note to the, what happens, your clerk, AP clerk, that please retain 10% of the payment actually. So click on it. I will not go on creating invoice. Right? Click on create invoice. So the PO is 2000. So for the PO 2000, what happens is he's not going to create invoice because the supplier has already supplied that he has now given uh, 2000 uh, or 10 dollars, $2, fine. So uh, 100 quantities into 10 dollars, $200, he has already provided along with the taxes basically. Right? But now the payable clerk is not going to pay only for 90 quantities. Remember. And remember, accrual is quantity based represented money now. Right? Click on it. You will not put 2000. So 2000 will not put fine. It's not, come, it's not coming. ABC can sell it. Click on it. Not put it. So you're not going to put it. Not click on it. The entire thing is coming. I will not say. What happens? I will not say. Five thousand one is the invoice number. So amount is what he's not going to release only one eighty, not two hundred. One eighty. Twenty. Ten percent is what? Ten quantities is not hundred quantities. Fine. 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 So, you know, withholding 10 quantities on this one, click on it. And then 180 quantities, fine. So, click on the match invoice links. You know, click on it. So, matching it, what happens? We are now going to obtain the distribution, fine. Right? We will now match it and distribute it. So, matching is the best way, fine, by which whatever it gets accrual gets relieved, actually. Once when you match it, the accrual gets cleared, fine, selected. And then here, what happens? There's now 100 quantities. Because the requesting department or the AP department itself has decided not to pay fully, fine, goes up to 190. And this is the biggest headache in many, many companies, actually. So many, many invoices, many, many invoices may not be paid in full at all. And this, orders, this happens. And then we have to, what happens, uh, do this now. Right? Click on, we have to make an analysis on this. Now, right? Nine, nine quarters, nine, nine, click on, okay. So 90 quarters only I'm paying it because of some problem from the requesting department or AP itself will be having problem with the supplier actually. Even though the full supplies have been made and ordered, available is 100 for matching now. Available 100, but we are now matching only for 90 quarters. Received and then available for matching is 100. So click on, apply, 90, you are making, click on, apply, and then click on, okay. So we are not going to make a payment only for 90 quarters. 
where my students are struggling like anything. And they say that it's really very, very difficult. And then go there. So here, whatever they go there, and then click on save now. Fine. Once when the matching is obtained, the distribution is not obtained actually. We are not creating a distribution. My distribution is getting created. You go to the right hand side, not click on it. And then go there. You'll not get a green tick mark because 180 plus taxes has to come, but this location is not having any taxes at all. And so there is no tax at all. Otherwise, what happens? The tax, withholding tax, all the retainage, all these things will be coming up. Right? So uh, there is no prepayment also, my nothing is coming. And so you're getting a green tick mark. So now it can be very well validated. I click on it. Now done. I go there. You go to actions and then go to validate. I click on validate. You're not going to validate. So we are validating it now. I click on it. So now it is validated actually. And then go there, click on it. And then here, what I was, I will not go to what post to ledger. Yeah. Oh, painful, yeah. I will not click on painful now. So I'm not going to make a payment painful. I click on painful. You will not pay it also. <clears throat> so click on it. The bank account, drop it down. You will not have what one. Uh, uh, now nothing is coming properly fine uh, because it is not set properly. So payment is not fully set on this now. So I will not use it now. If I can say. So bank account is not coming. So it is not a vision one because our own branching now fine is not there. So validation is sufficient actually. You go to actions and then here, what happens? I will not post to Jilgil. So by posting it, what happens? Uh, the accounting gets created for whatever has been validated, but it is not paid actually. I click on the post ledger, which whatever the accounting gets created actually. So, go there. so accounting has been completed. Fine. Click on the view opening and I'll see the accounting. This is only for what? Your accrual to liability. So it has accrued to 200, but only 180 has been cleared and then made as a liability actually. No, no. And you can now see that what happens the account, fine. It's got 22100 and then 70, fine. These two accounts are hit now, fine. 00 and 70 are hit now, fine. Click on it. This place, what happens there? 00 is hit now, fine. 00 is hit. So AP liability is hit and then PO accrual. So AP liability to PO accrual is not done now. So 70 to 00, fine. 70, fine, on the debit side and then 00 on the credit side. So liability is now created, fine. So 70, the PO accrual, the P, and the purchase order we have accrual. So that has got accrued for one, $200 out of which only 180 has been cleared on the PO accrual. And then the liability is now created back. Receipt accrual will only be left. So from P, yeah, PO accrual to liability is now created. So till 20 more dollars, there is a 10 quantities, 20 more dollars is not, still not, what happens, uh, is not, liability is not created for us. It's still accrual there. So click on, so click on now. It's all done. So everything is done now, frankly, correct. So afterwards, if you go to the actions and then what happens, you go there. If you click on the validated account, frankly, on the validated account here, what happens, you can now see that. What happens, it is validated, accounted, and then unpaid, actually. It is validated as well as account also, but it is not paid because payment is not set at all for my business unit. It has been set, then it will all the big muscles. Now, we will now push it into the receipt accounting area. This data, we have to push it into the receipt accounting area. Frankly, click on okay, now. We are going to push this data into the receipt accounting area. So if you go to the receipt accounting, so click on done. <coughs> On the main area, if you go on and see, fine. So here, the unmatched accrual balance is not coming. Now, once when I push the AP data into the receipt accounting area, now the unmatched accrual balances will be coming. So go, there, go to the model process, and then here, whatever you go there. So click on the schedule new process, and then it will not, whatever the run it, something like that. So it will not, whatever the uh, transfer, transactions, transfer, transactions from whatever the cost to cost. So this is the AP data into this is going to push the AP data into the receipt accounting area. This construction transfer transaction transfer transfer transaction from cost to cost accounting. Fine. Let's say cost and then give it a cost to cost accounting transfer transactions from cost to uh, inventory costing is there by receiving the costing cost to costing is not coming. Come on here. <clears throat> transfer transaction from cost to costing as company if I cancel no answer. Transfer transactions, uh, tra transfer yeah. transactions from cost to cost accounting has to come up and consuming. So go there, click on search and find it on it. I'm going to make it in the bottom of the make a search. I will now say transfer percentage find cost percentage and then make a search and find it on search. Transfer transaction from cost to cost accounting has to come up. So transfer, uh, transfer cost to cost management. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not transactions basically. I made a mistake actually. So transfer cost to cost management. So this will not put the AP data into the receipt accounting area. Transfer cost to cost management will not transfer the what happens the cost from the AP to receiving. Thank you, it will not push. And then the business unit is what T01. And then give it a tab now. Thank you, the coming thank you, sir. Transfer cost to cost management will not put the data. Fine. You must enter a value to, um, okay, uh, cut out date. I will not say up to month in now. And month in I'm doing it. Thank you, Connor. So click on it. So this is not this is now asking for a cutout date. Okay? Up to what date you want to what happens the transfer it actually. So click on it is not right. 
Now it will now land up on the interface tables of receipt accounting. The transfer cost to cost management will be landing up on the interface tables of receipt accounting. So 180 is paid and then 20 is not paid actually. So there will be what? You'll be having what? Unmatched accrual balances will be coming. The unmatched. And this is a big headache. Very big headache in many, many companies. So go back to connect. I will not go to what? Go to the monitor process and so for you for transfer cost to cost management. So it does not succeed in offense. Transfer cost to cost management will succeed. Now, what I got, if you go there and then if you refresh it, it won't be visible at all. Fine. You have to bring it to the base tables. It does not land up on the interface tables, not like on it. And then we have to bring it to the base tables by whatever they're creating the distribution. So the data from AP, that is $180, which is not paid, or the liability is not created, that will now come into the base area only when you create the receipt, create the distribution. Right? I don't know what happens. I'll create the receipt accounting distribution. So once when you create it, what happens? Unmax will now get it. And then click on submit. Now I click on submit. So once when you submit for it, it's not running now. So once when it, then what happens? The distributions also will be getting created. Right? We're not running it. So first of all, create receipt accounting distribution. It will now spawn a child actually for creating the distribution. So it's not wait. Now I click on it. Now waiting. And then once the process is completed, so you go back to quantity. Mm. It is a quantity distribution no running. And then it will be spawning, importing it. Now, fine. The importing is now coming back. The import will now again trigger one more thing for distribution creation. So the data which has not come from AP has now reached the interface tables. And then your create distribution accounting is now importing the transactions which are there in the interface tables of receipt accounting. And go back to quantity. And then that will also process the distribution. Import transactions no running now. Input on the interface to base interface the receipt accounting unless so interface to base tables fine there's no coming. So once when it is available on the base table, I'm gonna come on. No succeeded. Now what about that? The distribution sub process is done. So this is the responsible for taking the distributions. So once when you run the re, uh, create receipt accounting distribution, there are three concurrents which are running now. When three years as jobs are running. So once when everything is caught, so the, the parent is passed and the child running. Once when all the childs are completed, the parent will be running off and you So now everything is now running. So once when the receipt accounting distribution process is now completed, the parent will be running. And then finally, what happens, you can now see in this area, the unmatched accruals will be there. This is the biggest headache, actually. This is the biggest headache. And then uh, people, what happens, they struggle like anything to whatever they clear the unmatched accruals. We have to clear it. Everything has got subsided. You go there, fine, click on it. I will not refresh it. Fine. If you click on the refresh, you will not find the unmatched accruals coming. Fine. Click on it. Mm -hmm. Don't click on refresh. Once when you refresh it, you can see the unmatched accruals has to come. Fine. Not coming. Mm -hmm. Click on it. Unmatched accruals has to come now. Fine, click on it. Okay, fine. One second. Here, what happens? It is not coming fine. because what happens if you go there? Fine, click on it. In this place, you go there. And then here, what happens? We have to run on match accrual reception. Even though it has come to the base tables, only when you do the match, what happens? It will be coming over here. You have to perform a match actually. Click on the match. So in the accrual reconciliation area, what happens? They click on the match. Only when you only when you create the match, what happens? The unmatched accruals will be coming. Click on match. You're going to match. Fine. It is what is called the receipt accrual to AP accrual, no? AP liability. Fine. Receipt accrual to AP liability. Fine. What is fine? Click on the match receipt accruals. Fine. Click on match receipt accruals. The business unit is what T01. And then give it a tap now. Fine. Now give me the fine. And then from date is what? I don't see. From first of all, fine. First of this month, and, the, and then it is the what, what happens the whole month actually. I'm running it. Fine, click on. So we will not run this match receipt accruals. Fine, click on submit. Fine, click on submit. Then what happens? It's not running. So once when this completes, what happens? You'll now see the error. The difference will be coming. So matching it. So we are not matching the receipt accruals actually. Even though it has come to the base tables, we had to perform match it. Match receipt accruals up process. Running, running, running. So once when this completed, what happens? You can now see. That is not completed. Now go back here and click on it. I'll not go there. Fine. Click on the refresh icon or no see, no see unmatched accrual balance. Now we got it. Fine. So here, what happens if you see in the first line, it is accounts payable accrual. Fine. The blue one is the accounts payable accrual. Fine. The accounts payable is liability all of that. The one eight dollars. And then it is the receipt accrual. So we have received this much, but we have cleared only 180 now. And then the difference is what 20 dollars. And this is the biggest problem. 
and then twenty dollars. And remember, and then if you're running it, and then over a what happens a month or over two months period, this yellow color will be going into even one million dollars. So if it is one million dollars, what does it mean? So let us. It is because what happened? The supplier has not provided the warranty certificate, not the guarantee certificate, or some other thing, or the test certificates, or the standard operating procedures has not given. So once when he gives, what happens? You have to pay. This is not yet paid actually. Right? This is the difference between the what happens? The receipt accrual and then the payables accrual. This has to be paid after some time if the supplier meets the needs. And then if it is now gone up to one million dollar, then what happens? We cannot make a new purchase order at all. They will not see the unmatched. How much we have to pay to various suppliers? If it is one million, what happens? They will not stop the purchasing. Fine. They will not instruct the purchase officers. Don't make any more purchases because what happens? The accrual, the unmatched accrual has now crossed one million. Fine. And so what happens? If the suddenly all the suppliers meet all the criteria, then we have to immediately pay the one million. Where from we will have the money? So what they will ask is they will ask the payable stream, the receivable stream, and then what happens? Talk to the supplier. Supplier says that I will never pay. Then what happens? You have to inform that I am going to write it off. I am going to write off this money. So write off everything. All the yellow you write off after discussing with the supplier because supplier has to say, okay, you write off. It doesn't matter because you are asking for a one million dollar. What happens? Your turnover. I am unable to provide. Next year I will provide. Okay, this year I am not writing it off. Fine. You give us what happens? You talk to them verbally or otherwise through emails. You do it and then what happens? You write off this section. You have to write off. And then only after the money in the yellow color has come down significantly, then only they can go for a new purchase order. Otherwise, what happens? This much of money will be a nagging money which they have to pay at some point of time to the supplier. If the supplier is agreeing for write off, no fine, you are going to accrue write off. Then what happens? It will be great action. And then that will be a big task. And then there will be so many purchase orders, so many what happens? The invoice matching, invoice matching there. So now it's only one is now showing you, fine. It will not show you POOs, no fine. But there is a report which will not tell you POOs, no fine. They will not run the report, no fine. Not click on it. So there is an accrual reconciliation report. Right? Accrual recon and then report. So accrual reconciliation report. They will not run it every day now. Every day evening they will not run it. Right? It's accrual reconciliation report. Click on it. Now this will now give you a complete picture of you know, business unit is what T01. Click on it. And then uh, accrual accounts. Okay, fine. And then transaction date from transaction date. Fine. Go ahead. Click on it. I don't say 11, uh, 10th onwards. Fine. 10th onwards. The transaction date. Whatever. No. Click on it. Because you started the estate, okay. Remaining wheels, I'm not leaving it as you know. So, the supplier, what happens? I'm not saying ABC consulting, you would have no ABC consulting. I got what is this? Does it frankly consume it? So, we can even what happens restrict it properly, frankly consume it. I will not run the rate, so it will not show this report. So, they will not run this report. This report will tell you which which PO how much has been held up, fine. So, for which they have to discuss the supplier. So, the payable steam. The uh, requisitioning team, uh, the inventory in charge team, and then the AP team all have to sit together and then what happens? They have to bring down the yellow to minimal. Right? If it is a significant amount, what happens? The manager will be very much worried. They may even stop the pur further purchases at all because we owe this much of a money. Right? This much of a money is now, let's say, uh, $1 million or otherwise $500,000 is there in this yellow color. So, otherwise, the supplier says, okay, you write it off. Then what happens? It will be coming down. Once when it off, the yellow color will be coming down. Everything will be written off, actually. So that is a big process. And then my students are struggling on this now, fine? Because supplier do not agree. The management will not say something, anything. Fine, that I will not give you tomorrow, day after tomorrow, something like that. <laughs> the laptop is now given, but the carry case is not given. So because of which you are not leading it. Fine? He says that the carry case. The carry case is not going to really work, do anything at all. But the request says retain 10% for the carry case. Then we have to retain no other bonus. Click on it and then go there. And then click on this now, PDF. Then go to the PDF file and then have a look at it. So this report will not tell you PO wise. No, fine. It will not tell you PO wise. Fine. There's no one PO. Fine. God. The first PO. Fine. The 2000 PO. Fine. Is the item number. Fine. Go the order. Inventory. And then use dollars. Fine. So PO accrual balance. Fine. Go the net accrual balance. Fine. Dollars. PO accrual is not showing 200. Fine. Go And then here, what happens? Uh, we can now see this. Uh, what happens? 180 also will be coming. Click on it. What is this? <clears throat> Uh, this one, yeah, this is one. The second line, fine. The base model is uh, amount paid is 180. You know, fine. So price, fine. Somewhere, what happens? The accrual balance is what? No showing you. No fine. Accrual payable account balance is 180. And go that. And then net accrual balance is 180. Somewhere you'll be able to see the 20 dollars. I'm not able to see. It. The transaction quantity is 90 dollars. So the invoice is not created for 90 dollars. I'm not showing you. But what happens? They'll be able to understand this now very, very well. Five thousand one is a whatever the invoice number on which whatever they don't pay for one eighty actually, and then go that where is that twenty dollars where you can see the number. 
I'm not able to see it. <laughs> Probably, what happens, we may have to run it after some time. We may have to again, what happens after the match approval, we had again create the distribution and then do it and then again run the report. That's what I'm not exactly aware of. Them. But this is a very useful report for them. And then they will now be able to analyze with the various supplies about how much is spending and then how much has to be written off. <clears throat> the detailed report. So this is a very excellent utility for them for the, what about the analyze the topic. So for the tool. I'm not exactly fine because what happens, my accounting may not be exactly proper because of which what happens, the $20 is not coming. So whatever has been paid is coming here. And then whatever the PO account is not showing you, fine, that. and then the difference is not shown over here. Fine. Oh God, I don't know where we do. So you make an analysis, fine, how they are doing it. It's a beautiful report. So go ahead. So close it. <clears throat> so I'm closing it. Now, what I do is, I, I know, I don't, what happens, you go there. If you go to the receipt accounting, fine. If you click on this uh, on this info let now, if I click on the info let, it will not open up one more page. And then it will not show you this $20 levels. So go that click on it. So here, what I'm going to show you, fine. 200 and 180. Fine. For the same 2000 purchase order, we got two lines actually, fine. So there is no showing on minor, there's no going on positive, fine. Go that not, not showing you this. So this purchase is coming. So it will not show you. And remember, accrual is quantity based, fine. Very important. Fine. Accrual balance is quantity based. So it's quantity based actually, fine. 100 and the 90 is not clear. Fine. 10 is not clear actually. Net invoice, how much has been invoice? No, fine. What of net receipt and net invoice is not showing. So here we don't have any write off here. No, fine. No actions there. So from uh, if you click on the info, let we don't have fine. Click on the no, fine. We'll not do it manually. Fine. Click on it. No, no, no. no, no. So here, what happens if you click on it, not coming. But through the navigation, we can very well do the write off. No, fine. Here you cannot write off at all. Fine. You can only view it. No, fine. Click on it. It'll go there. So here, what happens? You go there. So go to this place. No, fine. Click on it. What happens? Uh, uh, accrual reconciliation. Like other uh, match receipt accrual is not as I mean audit receipt accrual clearing balance. So go to the audit receipt accrual clearing balances now. In the accrual reconciliation, I go to the audit receipt accrual clearing balance. I click on it. So here, what happens? You go there and then make a search on this now. Fine. The business unit starts with I'll not say T zero one. <clears throat> Your table now. Fine. So here, what happens? You go there and then the property center is okay. Fine. Click on search. Fine. Once when you search for it, I'm going to show you. Fine. Go there. Not showing you this. Fine. Not showing you. So here, what happens? I will now write off this twenty dollars. Something will happen. Place. So here also is not coming. No action is coming. So this is not the navigation. Is the audit only fine? The audit is also not having any actions button. No fine. Click on no the actions button. Is not there. This is only an audit button. So here, on a adjust receipt. So this is the place where I am going to adjust the receipt accrual balance. No fine. Click on it. I will not click on the accrual clearing, and then I will not adjust the receipt accrual balance. So business unit starts with I will not say T zero one. Give it a wrong. And then the supplier, what happens? I will not say starts with equals with no saying the ABC considering. I will not leave the supplier fine. Accrual aging now. Fine. I will not say, I will not say not. Fine. Uh, up to after 365 days, it's still aging. You will not have to do that. I will not say all. I will not say uh, more than 30 days. Fine. No, nothing is there actually in this place. No, I will not click on all. Go there. So I will not put the supplier now. Fine. The ABC considering. And give it up. ABC considering. Drop it down and choose the supplier. I'm searching. <laughs> I'm not choose the supplier. So make the proper then you know, fine. ABC. Click on search. It's not coming at all. Ah, T01 business unit starts. Fine. Click on search. And you won't be having much of a data actually. So I'm not doing anything. Click on it. It'll not give you a large result. Doesn't matter. In T01, you have got only one result actually. Otherwise, what happens? You have to filter it properly. We got only one. So now accrual amount is $20. This I'm going to write off. I'm going. I don't discuss with the supplier. Okay, he has to supply what happens. Uh, uh, yeah, standard operating process is saying that I am not having it. So what happens? I will not say I will not pay it off. I mean, we are going to write it off. And go to the actions. And we are good actions. And then what happens? Uh, adjust the balances. And click on adjustments. We are not going to adjust the balances. Because, uh, so what happens? Uh, uh, supplier not provided. I will not say standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. So he's a dealer and then he's not having it now, fine. Only the manufacturer will be having it. So you know so because of which what happens, you're writing it off, fine. We'll not pay him. So it gets adjusted. So the line will vanish actually. The line will vanish. The accrual balances were processed now. So totaling $20 is not balanced now. Fine. So go there, click on done now, fine. Click on done. And then here, what happens if you make a refresh now? You now say how much has been written off actually. It's not written off. But this $20 is not still appearing. Fine. Doesn't matter. When you do the accounting, I think probably it will be vanishing now. Fine. <clears throat> now, after what happens, you can now see this place. Fine, click on it. No, go there. I will not go to what again. I just resume. Bring up another. There are no return of twenty dollars. I will not go there and query for it. Fine, click on start. And then go there. <clears throat> I will not go to what T01. And then give it up. 
starts with Bangalore Electric Consultation. Uh, I don't know, you know, no, no, I love you all. No, I don't know, I get it all. All did have Bangalore Consultation. But then these are all, nothing is there. Thank you, Congress. No, I don't know. So we don't have any entry at all because it is a bit written off. So now supply says, yes, sir, I am now giving you the standard operating procedure. So why don't you pay? So once when it is written off, we cannot make a payables also. Payables invoice cannot be created against the written off now. My written off uh, my quantity, we cannot do it. My payables will not allow you to what happens to create invoice. So what you do is you go to the next tab region called adjust accrual balances. There you'll be seeing it now. Thank you, Conrad. And then the business unit, what happens starts. Whatever has been adjusted, it will not show you. Fine, three zero one. And then the click on search, it will not show. Me. Now supply says, sir, I will not give you no. Fine. Why don't you pay no? You select it and click on it and then go to actions and then you will now reverse that just so since he because we have to oblige to him now fine he, he is the person who is now supplying us and then he says now i can do after some time also what happens you will say you will not write a mail that it is not written off uh, you will now be becoming very much written and then you will now say that okay i will not do it thank you reverse adjustment you will now go to the results and find uh, <clears throat> supplier complied complied fine i don't click on okay fine it is not getting reversed now. So now this is now getting reversed now. Fine. The accrual reversal adjustment is possible. Thank you. Fine. No, no. And then go there. Nothing is there. If you go to the main one and then make a query, it will be appearing there. Now. And then go there. Click on search. Now. You. It's not already come. It's not come. So now what happens? This is the way you are doing now. Fine. Click on the now. And then go there. And then if you click on the reversal, fine. the accrual reversal is going to go on. No go. But doing it manually is very, very difficult actually. Right? Manually is doing it. Because I'm not doing only one invoice now, right? So we have to write off so many what happens, the differences basically. For which what happens, we have a rule actually. So we have to go and get a rule. And then now what happens in this place, we have this accrual appearing. Fine, right? go to the adjust zero accrual, fine, go to the comment. And then if you go on and query for this, no, fine. I'm going to say start it. We have it. So these are on. So you'll have hundreds of lines here now, fine. I want to what happens, I do it. I'm sorry. I'm not giving no more. I'm going to make it all now. Right? So you'll have hundreds of lines in this place now. Fine. The management will say whatever is min between minus 50 and plus 50, please write off everything. <clears throat> so, based upon the instructions, what happens? You're going to 100 lines in one go. We have to go and write off with a rule actually. And writing a rule is a very complex one. And then, depending upon the management's instruction, you are doing nothing. So, we are going to write off hundreds of rules. Right? <clears throat> so, now you're going to write. So, how to do it? We'll see. So, here, what happens? We have one, uh, uh, one of my students has given, one of the financial guys has only given one uh, document actually. On writing off the rule automatically. You know, I'm not going to go to I'm not going to place my I'm going to show you this. So, go to that. In the fourth document, what happens? Uh, recon. I'm not going to put it. Recon. A reconciliation process. So, this is given by one of my financial guys. He says that there are multiple ways of writing it. This is one way of writing. This is what he's saying. So, depending upon the management's instruction, we will not write this rule actually. Double click on it. We are going to write the rule now. Thank you. So, you may have to what happens, do it in a different, different manner actually. So, with this page, what happens? I am now going to write off the rule actually. And rule writing is all. It's a very tough one. And then uh, you have to sit, sit and then think and then do it now. Fine? Exactly. First of all, understand the management's instruction regarding write off. And then accordingly, what happens? You have to do the write off now. Thank you. No, go there. I will not click on it. I will not go to what? Clear receipt accruing. Uh, what happens? Manage accruing rules. So we adjusted through adjustments, we adjusted the rule. Uh, now what happens if we brought it back again? Now we are going to create a rule and then with the rule, we are going to write off now. And that is the best method now. Click on the manage accrual clearing rules now. Click on the manage accrual clearing rules. Click on it. We are going to get a rule actually. And it's a very tough one. <clears throat> My students say that uh, whatever management has given a clear instruction accordingly, we are doing now. So the business unit is what? T01. And then give a tab now. So click on go now. Click on go. It become a, click on it. In the bottom, what happens? You are going to create a rule. Click on the plus and then the general rule. In the bottom rule, click on plus and then click on the general. You are going to get the general rule. So the if condition has to be written very properly. Now my financial student has given me one, one such condition: accrual line dot accrual amount difference. Fine, it is in between these two values. And and that accrual line invoice accrual amount is what more than zero. So now what happens? Our liability is now one eighty dollars. If the liability itself is not created, that line should not be what happens a clear action. So this means what? Only where the liability is created actually. But more than zero means what? The liability is created for that particular one. Right? So under these conditions only we can write down. Right? If the liability itself is not created, it is not more than zero. Right? If the liability is not zero or less than or something like that, then what happens? The line will not be considered for clearing. Right? So these two conditions you have to really what happens? The discuss when doing. Right? He has given this condition. I am now going to do it. Accrual line dot accrual amount difference fine right? in between now. Mm -hmm. Accrual line dot accrual amount difference. I will not click on plus now. Fine, go down. And then the simple test now. <clears throat> the simple test, what happens? You go there. 
and then click on the magnifier icon and click on the magnifier icon and accrual line is the one fine and then go there and then here what is saying accrual line dot accrual amount difference accrual amount difference no, fine. accrual line and then what happened you have to go to the accrual amount difference you go there accrual amount difference this is the one now fine expand it accrual amount difference and then in the accrual amount what i'm going to make the long value and long value we don't care so we are now written the first condition of an accrual line dot accrual amount of between click on between it's between now and then here what happens we had to give what happens in this place one click on the magnifier icon and then go there operate so in this place what happens within double quotes fine double quotes we are given now in the double quotes within double quotes i will now say minus 100 double quote and then we have got only 20 actually here what happens double quote and then 100 double quote and then double quote so operate on so uh, in, in between these two values actually it must be double quotes actually click on okay so we have now written the first condition actually so go there so click on plus on that what happens you go there i will now make one more, one more test now if i click on it. another one so the second line will be under actually once you go for under uh, the getting under actually go there, click on it. so accrual line dot invoice accrual amount go there. so click on it accrual line and then invoice accrual amount i'm going to come on you know go to the invoice accrual amount Invoice accrual. Uh, invoice accrual amount. Invoice accrual. It must be more than zero actually. And long value. And click on it. So click on it. Fine. Accrual amount. Accrual line dot invoice accrual amount. There is the AP liability. Fine. Click on it. Is on now. Fine. Click on it. It's more than zero. Say more than. Uh, more than. And then click on it. Fine. Go there. So here again, what happens? Double quote zero. So double quote zero. Double quote. Fine. So both the conditions are now written. So this writing of the condition, we have to talk to the management, whatever the, their guidelines accordingly are written. Then what? Then we are going to clear the accruals. Right? Name is what? In the asset new, what happens? We are going to clear the accruals. So click on, so click on drop down. And then here, what happens? Go to the asset new now. Asset new is the drop down. Asset new. So here, what happens? We are going to clear the accruals. Right? Drop it down. And then choose the clear accruals. So clear accruals. And then we have to pass on the parameter. Actually. We have to pass on a lot of parameters as we pass on. So this is one example of passing the parameters. He has now passed one, two, three, four, five, six, six parameters he has passed. So accrual clearing amount is the one I am going to pass on. And then click on the magnifier icon. Click on the magnifier icon. The rule is what? Rule one. Fine. Rule one. Fine. Click on it. Now click on the magnifier icon. So accrual clear amount he had to pass on. Fine. Click on accrual clear amount. Fine. Accrual clear amount is what? Accrual line dot accrual clear amount. Fine. Accrual line. <clears throat> Accrual line and expand it and then accrual clear amount. So six parameters we had to pass now. Right? Accrual clear amount. This is the one. So expand it and then here what you go there. Accrual clear amount is the one point long value you had to choose. So the first parameter is passed. Five more parameters to pass. The next one is what? Is the accrual rule name now within double quotes the rule one. Right? So over there. Within double quotes. Rule one within double quotes. The one you are passing it. So two parameters, four more parameters you have to pass. Right? AP accrual amount, accrual line dot total invoice accrual amount. Right? Total invoice accrual amount. So AP accrual amount. I don't know that. The third parameter you are passing. If I click on it, accrual line, and then what happens? You know, see what is that? Is that total invoice accrual amount? So total invoice accrual amount. Total invoice accrual amount. Total invoice accrual amount. He said that by working, working, it will not get habituated. You won't be finding it difficult. That's what he's saying now. <laughs> totally invoice accrual amount. If I click on it and then click on OK. Right? Because you have to have the logic and then say which, which parameter you have to pass now. So three parameters, three more we have to pass now. Click on it. And next one what? CMR accrual amount. Right? I don't know what exactly CMR. Fine. CMR. CMR accrual amount. Fine. This is the one. Fine. Click on it. And then drop it down. Fine. Click on it. And then drop it down. The CMR accrual amount is what? It is accrual line dot total receipt accrual amount. Fine. Total receipt accrual amount. Fine. Click on it. Click on it. And then here, what I'm going to say, total receipt accrual amount. Go down. So, total receipt accrual amount. So, total receipt accrual amount. Total receipt. Long value. Fine. Click on it. No past. So, four parameters have been passed. Two more has to be passed. Fine. Click on it. And then here, the next one is what? CMR PO distribution ID. So, go there. So, PMR distribution ID. Click on it. Yeah, CMR distribution ID. Click on it. And then click on the magnifier. Now, the fifth parameter you're going to pass. Now, fine. Click on it. You're going to pass the fifth parameter. So, ID. Accrual line dot. Purchase order distribution identifier. No? Accrual line dot purchase order distribution identifier on that. Accrual line. And then you go to the purchase order distribution. This is the one of fine. Click on it. And then go there. Choose it. Now, fine. Long value. This is the ID actually. This is the ID you had to pass. Now, fine. Click on it. Purchase order distribution. And the final one is what? CMR PO line location ID. No? Fine. Is the purchase order schedule identifier. So line location ID. Fine. This is the schedule identifier. Fine. 
purchase order schedule identify and expand it. No pass on the purchase order schedule identify. Purchase order distribution and then we have to go to our purchase order schedule identify. Drop it down, go down. Mm. Go to the base. Purchase order schedule identify the one fine. Expand it. And then you have to go to the long value. Fine. Click on okay. So click on okay. So the, so these six parameters. So number of parameters to pass also will vary depending upon the if condition actually. Fine. So this is a, this will not come by practice. That's what he's saying. Fine. If you do them two, three times the accrual clearing, then what happens? You'll understand about how to pass on this problem. Thank you. Come again. Fine. This one. So all these things are passed fine. That one. And then you go to validate now. Fine. Go on. So once when the rule is so it's only a syntax validation, it will not be a logic validation actually. Fine. Click on validate. So the syntax will be validated now. Fine. Click on validate. The validation will be done. <coughs> Again, no validation errors are found. It is only syntax validation actually. No, no, no. So go there, click on it. It's all done now. Oh, what happened? Everything is so click on save now. Fine, click on save. It is now created. Fine, click on it. No, no, no. Fine, we are now completed the creation of fine. So the rule is now created. Fine, click on save and close. Now we will not run this now. Fine, click on it. We will now go to save and close. So we will be running it frequently every day, every one day, or every two days or something like that. We will be running it. Fine, click on it. So go there. Now, now we have this uh, accrual line. Now, fine, click on it. And then go there. We will not run this now. Fine, click on it. We are going to run it. Fine, now go there. So once when the accrual clearing rule is created, we will now clear the result using this uh, rule actually. Clear receipt accrual balances will not end. Fine. So we can only have one rule, and that one rule will be fired now. Fine. Once when you click on the clear receipt accruals. Once when you click on it, and the business unit is what T01. And then give it a now. Click on it. And then you have commit interval. And then click on submit now. Which one of us are now clearing it? Click on submit. Accrual reconciliation is the biggest headache for the many, many people. Fine. The EP team, the PO team. Mm -hmm. So go there. They go to the monitor processing and have all of it. Fine. Click on it. No running. <clears throat> so clear receipt accrual balances is not running. Fine. Click on it. You may have to even create again the distribution of fine. I'm not very sure about it. Fine. The distributions also, you may have to whatever so create the distribution of <clears throat> so create result account balance of fine. Now clear actually. So create result account and then go there. So here, whatever we go to the place of fine. We'll now go to the receipt account balance of fine. Uh, purchase order fine. We'll now go to the adjustment. So here, whatever you make a search, it will not be appearing at all. The line will vanish. The line will vanish. Everybody does also minus 100 to 100. So, go back. so click on S. No, thank you. We'll see the line will now vanish. So, it is now cleared by the rule now. Fine. If you go to the adjust accrual balances, you can now see there is a appearing. Now, click on it. I'm going to get it starts on what T01. And then you give a tab and then click on search. It will be appearing on the adjusted one. And then the right hand side lost whatever it now say it has been cleared by a rule actually. Fine. Go right, right, drag it down and then see that what was it? Rule one auto accrual clearing now. Fine. This is the rule which has fired actually. So this is not manually cleared, but it has been cleared by a rule one auto accrual clearing. Clear period. So uh, writing the rule is a very tough task. Find the no clear. And then here you can now see this. Fact, on, refresh it now. Find it And you can now see that. It is it is very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, the accrual rate of is not fine. Now let us now run the create uh, distributions also. Find that thing on it. Now go to the space. Find the is So click on it. You will not create a distribution. Now find the create receipt accounting distribution. Go there, business unit is what T01. And give it a now. <clears throat> and then go there, click on something. So, uh, this will be a program which will be running very frequently automatically. So, once when this is done, we will now run the reconciliation report and see whether we are able to see the $30 or not. <laughs> something is written off actually. But the frequency in which it has been run, those things are all not very clear. But this is a procedure for writing it now. Accrual reconciliation is the biggest headache in the real field. There's no running of it. So once the import transaction, then afterwards the distribution will be getting created actually. The distribution gets created. Talk to the financial team. They will now teach you a lot on how to clear this reconciliation. How to write up. Write off the what I was accrued receipt section. Because it is we have to discuss the supplier also. Supplier has to agree for the write-up. Then only you can write off in the system. Tomorrow, if you say then what I was you have to reverse that as I mentioned. So again, management will not show now. So once when the yellow color has gone beyond a certain limit, what happens is this needs what happens is this thing. Fine. There's no return out. So I wanted to see whether the yellow color is now going away or not. Fine. Then what is it? once when the distribution now created? Fine. Go there. I want to see that whether the yellow color goes away or not. Fine. Come on. Very good. I want to see that 20 is now going away or not. There's no return actually. Written off. The distribution now created. <clears throat> no return off with the rule actually. The 20 dollars no return off with the rule actually. Not sure about it. Fine. Again, what happens? Something may be missing from our side, actually. Man. Again, discuss the financial thing. And then what happens? The loan are very good. Make sure that is mm -hmm. go there. The amount process is not running at all. It is not succeeded, actually. 
So I have no good there, but whoever you visit, my God. So click on the refresh icon. No good there. So it's still appearing, okay? 24 hours appearing. Will not go to the what? Will not run the reconciliation report, my friend. Reconciliation report. Accrual reconciliation report. This is the one, my friend. I have not resubmitted it. And I will say parameter thing over. So click on resubmit. I will not resubmit the re reconciliation report and have a look at it. Whether it is not giving a better picture or not, thank you. And again, I'm not very sure about whether this will be written off or not. Right? The difference will go away because it's not written off, actually. Right? It has to go. I don't know how what is missing on my side. I'm not very sure. It's a very big uh, topic, actually. Right? I know the what about the basics only one of my one of she one of my students, and she taught me everything. Right? This is how we do it, sir. <laughs> so from her uh, knowledge, I learned it actually. She's from Pune, actually. And she has much more than right? But for your training, this is sufficient. That's what she told me. Go there. You know, what is the accrual reconciliation report? And have a look at the you know, you know, you know. Something more is also there. But the main process of what uh, talking to the supplier and then reconciling it is a big, big task actually. Get on the video. So go there. So now what happens is that there are three lines that are coming up. In the main I want to see the 20 of the actually. So 3001 is the one thing over there. The GR number actually. And then there's the invoice number. But how to map it now? I don't know. There must be some column. Right? But normally what happens is they will have a what happens the custom reports now. They will not create a custom report in which what happens they'll be giving you the clear return off differences or to be written off, right? Whatever is it. So that is a standard report of Oracle. So the report may not be really good. Right? They may even write a custom report. Right? This is the invoice number. Is having paid this much? And then this is the PO number. But uh, they will not club one report where what happens, they will be able to see the thing which has to be written off. And accordingly, what happens, they will not start to talk to the supplier. Actually. So this completes the big problem or big, big topic about accrual reconciliation. And this is a reconciliation is a real, real tough task. My students are shouting, sir, really struggling. We cannot even call you because what happens, we only know what is happening in the field now. Right? So based upon it only, they have to take an action. Right? So they say this is a real, very tough task for them. So this, what happens, we complete the, what happens, the accrual reconciliation. Tomorrow we'll now go to the cost accounting part. So bye for now, and then we'll now meet tomorrow. <clears throat> tomorrow, 2 p.m., no? Bye, sir. Yeah, yeah tomorrow, yes, sir. 2 p.m., no? fine. 2 p.m., we'll now meet, okay? We will continue at 2 p.m. Okay, yeah. Bye, sir. Never to our session. Okay, okay. bye. Bye, sir.